Welcome tonight, guys, to Esports U. We are going to be going into week one of the NJCAAE. That is quite a mouthful. Um, 2022 spring season. And tonight I have Gompers on the desk with me. And the first matchup of tonight is going to be a best of three versus Northern Virginia Community College and Bergen Community College. And how are you doing, Gompers? I'm doing good. I, you know, we, I, we casted Collegiate a while back. I'm excited to get back into it again. I always love seeing, you know, all the Collegiate teams. I, it's, it's a lot of teams that I haven't actually seen, you know, before, which is also the more fun because now I get to, you know, go deeper into seeing all these different types of college teams that we have. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, just to take you guys through the picks and bands for today. We are going to come out with Nova banning Split off the bat. Bergen is going to ban Fracture. Nova then picks Icebox, will, where Bergen will be defending first off. Bergen picking Ascent for map two, where Nova will be defending. And then, you know, last two bans going out will be Bind and Haven. And if we do, do go to a map three, that's going to be Breeze, where Nova will be on the defense first. And I believe uh, Gompers... Today, for the first matchup, at the very least, we are going to be seeing a 4v5 happen as one of the members on one of the teams. Can't remember which team it was exactly. Uh, we'll get that info to you guys momentarily. But they are just currently stuck in traffic. It is Bergen. Um, so they have elected to go with 4v5 while waiting for their last player. 4v5. That's that's one thing, you know, not willing to give it up, fighting for it. They're going into the agent select to see what agents everybody's going to have to pick. And I'm seeing, you know, with the four players, uh, I mean, you'd assume they'd kind of play more utility based. It does seem like two Sentinels coming through and the Viper being one of those main smokes here for, you know, this first map. But maybe maybe just kind of like dismissing the duelist i think if you can choose someone that can be effective enough like have a really good initiator because especially in like a you know a 4v what a 45 situation you want to have good information especially since you have the lesser numbers and and now that we have no initiator no information no sova no breach whatever it, it's going to be a lot harder for bergen to reach out for that information and try to take that at hand I agree, but I can also see the fact that, you know, Bergen starting on the defense first on Icebox, they're looking to get as many defensive rounds in as they possibly can before swapping sides. Or going for the double Sentinel does kind of make sense here. It is tough call, though, because uh, I I'm not sure if we'll be necessarily adding that player in halfway through if they are able to make it at the half swap, or if it's just going to be the full map that's being played out in a 4v5 situation. But ultimately, it, what's more important is also that these players are playing on agents that they're comfortable on. And if, you know, I'm not sure what Kevin mm -hmm. usually leans towards, but the Reina pick can also just be a huge game changer. Having that Empress online and available um, to isolate 1v1s, make space, and be able to use that Dismiss and Devour uh, just to clutch up rounds could be huge as well. It is definitely more... Um, of an individual, I mean, of an individualistic agent with Rena's kit and whatnot. But like I said, that Empress can definitely come in clutch uh, if your Reyna is able to frag out well. I mean, I have to agree, but we're going to see, you know, what the play style of Bergen is going to look like here, uh, especially with the players they have. Defending first, so it's going to be a little bit easier this time around. All they have to do is try to keep the site. If anything, just maybe just play the lead take. It's not going to be easy. Definitely not. And starting things out, Nova are going to be leaning it towards the A site this time around, where Kevin is actually alone here. And going to have to fall back, play their life a little bit. We are going to see the chamber rendezvous over. And that zero point, not going to find anything quite yet, but this execution is going to come out from Nova. And it's, I mean, already Nova is just pushing their way through, plus is able to get one. One enemy right At this point in time, it's going over towards Nova, but maybe it's maybe it's just the lack of the amount of players, because Nova just completely ran it down. It didn't entirely care about what util they were throwing Here. I would have liked to see Nova 
uh, or not Nova, sorry, Bergen playing more for the retake on A in that situation. I mean, it's tough because on pistol rounds, you have less utility to work with as well. But going into round two, we are going to see Nova leaning towards the A site once again. And mid, for the most part, largely being left open by uh, Bergen here, uh, considering the fact that they do have Sage kind of playing towards mid and B, but otherwise don't have much information. Standing. Kevin's trying to get something. It's already just a run it down once again by Nova. And I, I feel like we're going to see this a lot, Spicy. You know, once again, like, I could say this all day just due to the fact that there's only really four people. So the confidence is probably booming by Nova. They know, hey, we can just close out this round as fast as possible and possibly this map. For sure, here. I was just going to try and rat here with the 3018. Oh, pick yeah. with the shorty, but it's not going to be able to come through. Stagger closing out that round four. Nova. Not too surprising though, considering that Nova did have the gun advantage as well as the player advantage going into that round. So Nova, kind of just gonna stick to what's been working, continue to go towards A. However, Bergen does have rifles across the board this time around. Actually, unfortunately, Plus not able to afford that rifle going into round three. It's gonna have to stick with the Spectre this time around. And then you have Hero here playing the judge. However, no Vipers pit online. Just trying to hope that Nova does go towards B this time around, but still gonna be another A execution. Oh, once again, the A execution is looking pretty nice. Kevin's able to get one. I mean, having Arena alive still is probably going to help. Last player standing. BBC, BCC, sorry, I'm, I apologize for Bergen, but I mean already it's only one oh, player left timing. standing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult position to be in. It's definitely tough. I mean, in this situation when you're playing a 4v5, you can't really risk taking aggressive angles. We do see Kevin pushing out quite frequently trying to see if they can catch somebody off guard. Unfortunately, they're getting the con being concussed. The frag wasn't able to come through with the sheriff, and now Nova is going to be leaning towards A. Once again, Bergen having to save this time around after losing that third round, and it's going to be a gamble stack on the A site this time. However, still, no information really mid for Bergen, and that end from the jet is going to come through. Stagger's trying to find some pace. One enemy just remaining. Jumping in with the judge. At this point, the gun buys were just aggressive ones. As you can tell, you know, Nuno feels like they can just pressure in or really just use the judge to execute onto the site. And it's looking like this might be a fast one. Right there. Ooh, yeah, but I mean, being in a 4v5, that is such a touch situation. I would like to see some investment going into plus here, considering the Sage Resurrection is probably one of the most valuable ultimates on the side of Burden at the moment, uh, with the fact that they are just one person down in general as it is. So having the ability to bring somebody back from the dead can definitely be a tide turner. But... Kevin still getting aggressive here now. Going for a pipe's angle this time around might be good for one. Possibly. Kevin does have the Empress. If they are able to take out one, they could possibly pop it. Although it's just going to be really hard for Kevin not able to hit the shots. And already Nova's making their way forth. Wills able to plant the spike pretty freely. Once again, Nova just completely dominating onto the site. Yeah, it's, it's really tough, I think, to hold sight on defense when you are down one person from the very beginning. Nova definitely taking the advantage, moving as a unit, knowing that the Bergen is going to be pretty split up most of the time. They're not going to have, you know, that fifth player being able to watch those other angles have been taking advantage of that flank with, I believe it is Beefy. Yeah, Beefy, seeing that jet player flanking up through mid. But this time around, not going to go for that flank this time. They're just going to stick together. As a team, and we're gonna see this ultimate coming out from their breach very soon. We're gonna get another pick, and now it's just a 4v2. One enemy remaining. I already one enemy remaining. I mean, I, I, I guess in this point in time, just really playing for the pick might 
might help a little bit more. You can tell that it's just a constant aid take from Nova. And at this point, Bergen's trying to gamble the fact that knowing that they can't necessarily do anything by themselves or having that one more player on their side. I mean, but oh. It was a very, very close round for Bergen. Very time, though, is not going to really let anything happen with Bergen. It's just going to be a 6-0 and from Nova. The greed and the aggression from Nova almost lost them that round. Hero almost being able to clutch things up with a 3k for themselves. But going into round 7, Bergen is going to have four ultimates online. Kevin's going to have the Empress. The Resurrection is going to come in clutch. Plus, we'll have to definitely prioritize playing their life here in that situation to be able to keep that ultimate as a possibility for as long as possible in the case mm -hmm. that someone does fall early in a resible position from Bergen, but another blitz towards A, and we're going to see a fast flank coming out this time from Hero. Very times getting ready to put those slashes through. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure if Bergen has a ton of ultimates they could be using. I, I think if anything, anything could be good enough for Bergen right now. But Plus is able to get two, and that's going to be a good frag. It's a 2v2, a lot more equal in this round, so Bergen has to be able to step it up. Spike Ooh, down A. Is going to get one, but there's one more left. Veritine has the operator. It's an op on off showdown, but Veritine doesn't know. Hero right, coming right around the corner to get the slurk through. That's the first round on the board here for Bergen. Nice hold this time around. Two ultimates expended, but still have the, the Viper's Pit and the Resurrection available. The Viper's Pit, I think, has been kind of just being held onto by Hero at this point so far because being the player who is leaning towards the B site, Nova has definitely been conditioning and just taking A by force for the most part. It could really come in handy for a post-plant situation actually on a retake, try and cover that ground, reclaim that space on site to be able to get people off. Everybody's making their way once again from Nova over towards A, and it's just a constant iteration of pushing A. Nunu's just trying to get in. The operator is C, but it's going to be Nunu running through, able to get the connection. And Hero is left alone once again with the flank. It's not going to work out. Nova hatching on pretty quickly. I mean... It, it, it's tough. It is a bit of a roll because Nova does have this advantage with the players, but I also do want to point out that Nunu has been a menace pushing onto A site. I mean, just blast packing through, only a judge in hand, trying to get up in the faces of the players on Bergen. And usually good for a first blood for themselves as well is huge and says a lot about the movement that Nunu has and the skill with that movement that, that comes through as well as paired with the flashes coming out from their breach player and now we are going to finally see this viper's pit coming to fruition but if he's not afraid they're just going to try and hover over the top but hero is going to get the pick very times working their way but it's just going to be boop coming through with just a, a judge putting it right back in nunu's face it worked out perfectly i honestly think since nova does funnel themselves that the judge play could honestly work out really well. I also think that Nova maybe assumed that because the Viper's Pit came out on A, that perhaps it was only Hero holding the site, and that the other three had Gamble stacked towards B, hoping that a rotation was going to come through, and that read, unfortunately, wasn't quite right this time around. Nova going back towards the A site once again, and Bergen still just trying to stack site, playing retake everywhere else. The hunt begins. Oh. oh. It's unfortunate Kevin was blinded. Stagger had some information here and not able to connect. And right there, a ton of the players of Nova already pushing in. Boop is able to get one. Having the operator is probably going to be very beneficial. But Nunu is just coming through once again. I'm loving the race plays from Nunu. I, I, I mean, even though it's unfortunate for Bergen, Nunu has been, you know, the satchels have been on point. Yeah, Nunu definitely knows how to fly as Rays, and Nunu being one away from the Showstopper, I'm sure with this aggressive push in, Nunu might be looking to grab that A alt orb, if possible, 
Um, so, I mean, the fact that Bergen also has that Viper's Wall set up just to cut off the maze area, it makes it even more plausible that Mimu will be able to get that Showstopper online to help push onto site here. But luckily, I mean, we do still have that Resurrection available on the side of Bergen. It has yet to come out. The slow is able to stop the push uh, for just a little bit. Luke is trying to hold it back as well, but it's going to be Stagger rushing the reward, knowing Luke is up there, and it's going to be another one, although the last two are being used. The right click trying to be used as well. Luke can't really do much as the pressure is a little bit too much. A 9-2 to two here for Nova. Last round in the I... half. Okay, hold on. I just realized I, I wasn't... I mean, we talked about Bergen's team composition. I'm now just looking at the team composition that Nova has as well, and Nova is just primed, has just completely primed <laughs> themselves uh, for an attacking half, having three duelists and two initiators. No smokes available on the side of Nova. They're just going in with brute force here and taking advantage as much as possible of the fact that Bergen does not have that fifth oh, player feet. on the board, and now Bergen. Playing things a little bit differently this time are going to be going for a four-person rotation through mid here, trying to get the drop on the player's A, but BP's already just planning the spike, spike on B. Spike is already planned, Nova made their way fourth, but it's overall into the night, like you said. Bergen definitely not expecting it, especially since Nova had been pushing onto A site since really the start of the rounds, but... Seems like this site is going to be the site they're going to have to retake here. The Resurrection for plus, so technically I guess you could say it is a 5v5 right now as it is. The group is trying to push their way through the utility, not the best idea. The damage came through, Beefy was able to get two, and plus is minus one. Right there, Nova is taking their 10th round in, and now the half is over. It's Nova 10 to 2. Switching sides. 10 to 2, swapping sides, and... I don't know, it, it really depends on how Nova plays this particular half out. I I would be actually a little bit concerned that Nova might be over aggress here, considering their team composition being comprised solely of duelists and initiators, and feeling good about the fact that, you know, it is a 4v5, they are up 8 rounds so far. But, uh, I mean, the round hasn't quite started yet, yeah. so I can't make a call. But it does look like Nova's actually planning to force stack on A here and then just aggressively push out through main, leaving B open for retake, allowing BP just to kind of hold down mid and BCC are going to be moving towards the B site, but it's going to be a quick flank and having to clear these corners, BCC is going to be able to get this plant down, but will be quickly sandwiched by the Nova players. Yeah, Beefy's getting ready. That's one for Beefy. It was a beefy one as well. But Hero's gonna shut that down really quickly. Four v three. Not a lot of a difference. The stagger's gonna make it even bigger right there. Stagger getting the second, and Stagger's been proving that they can win these duels. And that's a third one for Stagger. Nova being able to buy in the next round and possibly. I mean, I feel like Bergen is going to feel pressure to force here. I mean. It, it's tough, because if Bergen doesn't force here, they are going to keep playing for match point with the rifles. But then at the same time, I, I don't know, Gompers, it's such a gamble. It, it's a tough situation for Bergen to be in. I mean, being a person down as well makes it even more difficult. Yeah. Um, if we could just take a quick peek at the scoreboard before heading into yeah. the beginning of this round, if possible. Unfortunately, not going to be able to this time, but they're going to playing farther back are actually expecting this push out from Nova. Stagger's just pushing up, ready. Not buying this One round from Stagger. Stagger knows they're a little bit better with just the boost in hand. They can hit the headshots, and we're going to see it right there. A flawless coming out from Nova. They're going to be able to buy this round as well, especially since a lot Match of them didn't point. invest too much money in the Spectres. Ooh, and it's tough because, I mean, like you said, we were debating whether Bergen or not was going to go for a buy, did do, kind of a cheeky, not a full, full force up last round, but they did end up buying some eco-weapons going into 
into that round, and that means that there won't be rifles across the board this time around. From Bergen, Boop though, going to go glass cannon for their team here with that vandal in hand. And now Bergen is kind of just waiting for this aggression that Nova's been taking. Daggers working their way up again, just really plowing through the mollies, and Hero's able to get three no right there, and it's working out perfectly. I, I think, you know, the approach is great from Nova, but Bergen's gonna figure out eventually that all you really have to do is hold an angle and spray it down. Yeah, but I mean, like you said, Nova has been doing the same thing time and time again, pushing out of A. Might happen here once again? With this five stack towards the A site, are ready to push out. I'm surprised that Nova's actually not just swapping over towards like mid or B for the aggression because Bergen at this point is expecting this A push. They are playing farther back for that least as well. Oh, not the judge. Oh yeah, this is scary. Although Nunu, Nunu's judge is in far range, so if it wasn't able to push one as far as they would like to, it doesn't matter though. It's gonna be Bergen losing this game unless yeah, unless Hero can pull Defenders something through, but win. it's not gonna happen. A 13-3 Nova being able to close out the rounds as fast as they can. Really unfortunate that Bergen's last player was not here, uh, you know, for that last last matchup, but I believe they are going to be here going into map two, which will be on Ascent, which is also Bergen's map pick. So when you also think about Agompers, Nova's map pick was Icebox. They're really comfortable on that map. Part of me is questioning whether or not that's their normal team composition or if it's kind of more of a troll composition going out because they knew that they were going to be in a 4v5 and just trying to get as much as they could on the attack. But either way, we are going to take a really quick break while we get the lobby set up and Gompers and I will be right back to bring you guys map two on Ascent.
and it says a lot about very quickly but um like i'm looking for like like ko would be nice he, he does have his knife if you line it up really good you can get it very far but sova's recon guard is so powerful when it comes to these really big sites where you can bolt down one site and kind of like see what's happening um i'm just looking for people who make like long range plays so maybe another chamber um maybe a bit of a jet. Another jet i'm always i'm always expecting to see a jet with the mobility you can get picks down mid very easily and, and to get around the map because it's such a big map she's she's fast same thing with neon she's fast if you want to rotate to another site you can make it there extremely quickly um yep. what else we'll what take <laughs> we'll take some more of that insight after a break uh, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll see you very soon. See you.
everyone, and we are back for map two of this Valorant match being, and I have the names this time, Greece. Jefferson State Community College and Hutchinson Community College. Told you I'd get you back with those names. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, we are going to the map known as Breeze. Now, Denki, you have a bit more knowledge about this than I do, so I'm going to be a little... A little relying on you for those uh, uh, map callouts, but uh, we'll take Hopefully. a look as we go into these hero bands here. Now, you were mentioning before you about certain heroes you, you wanted to see. Uh, let's pick Agents. up from where Agents. My bad. A bit too much Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch. It's showing. Uh, All good. But uh, All good. let's. What other agents would you be expect to see on Breeze? Uh. I have seen a very interesting sage wall. I'm waiting for like the memed on sage wall. That's genuinely what I'm like. I always are lineups. I know viper lineups on this map extremely well. So maybe another viper. Just cause like the, the lineups for viper on this map are, are a little bit easier to get a grasp of. Or yeah. at least like when you're attacking. Um, as for the sage wall, I've seen one on the two that I know are on A site. One, oh, for some yeah. reason, there's one that um, ends up... Oh, there's Sage? Oh, we Jen. might say both sides Sage. Maybe. Oh. Well, your your wishes Viper. might just come true here. My wishes might just come true. I've seen the, the Neon. The KO that the you The KO. Mentioning. I have not seen KO yet, so this would be great to see some of these uh some of these agents come out. The Chamber, I was expecting. And Phoenix. Nope, Brimstone. They're just they're just hovering. They're they're going all around. Smokes, yes, I feel are, like are, are, they, they are nice have, uh, on this site. They got forty seconds for their uh, agent locks. Starts with Sova on Jefferson, followed by uh, Jet on Hutch. Now uh, they're both still trying to figure out what they want to play, what they want to pick. Uh, coming down under twenty five. They keep hovering over KO and Sage. I'm, I'm figure, trying to figure out what nice guy Wayne's trying to do. And there's your Sage! There's the Sage. Hush. There's the Sage. And, oh, they may bring the Killjoy. Ooh, coming it's down, coming to, the down last to the last five, five seconds. seconds. Oh, I wonder if these are panic picks at this point. Comfort picks. Maybe. Comfort picks, maybe. Comfort picks, maybe. But we're on Breeze. We're not on just any other map. We're on sight lines. Oh, yeah, so. definitely. We saw that pick really briefly. We saw a chamber. Yep. No chamber. KO. No KO, sadly. No I, was, KO, I was really sadly. looking forward to it. I was, they were hovering it. They were teasing it. Something but, something uh, about KO just, just hits right for me every time I see a KO. KO, I think, um, agent-wise, not the strongest. Per se, character design wise, mm. <laughs> so good. Something so good, like scratches my brain with Ko. I don't know if it's the way he talks. I don't know if it's just the fact that he. There's no reason why they gave that robot pants. No shirt. An odd way of uh, <laughs> and going into that. the game. <laughs> I've never seen Ko, so I never knew that was. How he, how it looked. Really? Really. You've never seen KO. I've never seen it. Only the face of KO. I, I need to send you a picture of KO. You'll look at that hunk <laughs> oh, of no. Oh, no. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. I'll, I'll leave the hunk of bolts to you, then. <laughs> now, we, have, we see a good amount of people... Going to B site, but it seems they've forgotten the spike back at the spawn point. Not sure Leaving if that was behind. tactical or not. Leaving it, it behind for the Viper to pick up. You do see the Sage holding down on A site. Battle Sage off on her own. Lone Wolf. Yeah, but they get punished for it, sadly. And that's not really what you want to have when uh, you don't have any Five secondary times. healer. For example, Sky. You can use their ability to heal. Ooh, Bean Boy out with the picks, headshots. Getting the double kill here, evening up the odds in their favor. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. kill switch. Ambitious right click with the classic, but does not quite hit. Easy 3k. 
Nice oh, but... avoid of the flash, but sadly goes down. Poor Vague gets shut down by the attacking Viper. It's a 1v1 situation. Who's going to win it? It is Hutch. Gain a quadra kill. Viper. And they got the additional money by getting the spike planted. Oh, they're buying, huh? Oh, they buying, huh? The, that's that's what I've been mentioning. HCC, they seem to really, they re really go all in rather than saving. It's uh, it's one of those where maybe it's the right thing to do. Personally, I I definitely think rushing will like. For me, at least, I don't rush like big guns like Guardian. I, I rush like a Spectre if I win the first round. It just it just makes more sense in my head to have that extra advantage. Sure, just even if it's it's light, it still can do a nice good deal of damage. And we have these long side lights here on A. They have no idea the jet's right there. Playing it smart. Oh. Welcome back from that little break, guys. And yeah, we are going to be going to map two now. And just as a reminder, this is week one of the NJCAAE uh, spring season for 2022. And tonight we do have Nova, or also known as Northern Virginia Community College versus Bergen Community College. And on Icebox, Nova was able to take that under their belt, Bergen having to play a 4v5, and unfortunately, they're not able to get in contact with their last player right now, so it will be another 4v5 coming through. We definitely are, you know, sending good vibes to that player, hoping that everything is okay with them, um, but unfortunately, yeah, Bergen is, is going to have to go to Ascent, which is their map pick in a 4v5 situation once again, and seeing this agent composition coming out. This time around, it looks like, I mean, this time, Bergen is going to be starting on the attack first. Nova starting on the defense, and it looks like we might be seeing something kind of similar to what we saw on Icebox from Nova coming out, because they did run like a three duelist comp with two initiators on Icebox. This time around, swapping it, so it looks like it's going to be a two duelist versus and three initiator composition and i think that's interesting gompers i mean considering the fact that it is going to be you know the defensive side that they're starting on first rather than the, the attack like they did on icebox um i'm sure we're yeah. going to say see like the same type of aggression coming out from nova but i'm curious to know if they could, will be punished for it more this time around considering the fact that I, uh, icebox is a much larger map than ascent yeah, I mean, I have to agree. Also, uh, well, it's just difficult. So, Icebox is kind of a weirder map in the sense where it's not, the sites aren't necessarily as open uh, as the ones on Ascent. It, it is on the B side of Icebox, so I think it's it's generally going to be, you know, a little bit easier for the, the kind of like the attack to push their way through, especially a Nova, you know, if, if they're going to be attacking, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to just push through as they did before. And, you know, uh, since they have so many players, but we do see Bergen on the attack here, they're going to have to use a lot of utility to stop, uh, you know, a lot of the holds and the utility that might come through from the defense. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think Bergen knowing go, go, go. that Nova does like to get pretty aggressive on the defense especially in this 4v5 matchup right now having that killjoy on plus to be able to use that utility to watch for those quick flanks that we saw coming out on icebox mm -hmm. i get bergen is definitely anticipating maybe a similar rendition but this time around nova actually holding default defensive positions looking to get mid control but not pushing out his unit like before no, but Boop is gonna get the first one off of Monu and just around her a little bit easier, but Nova's gonna have it even easier. As I say that, they're just gonna close it off extremely quickly. Well, they're just pushing through, they're gonna do the same thing they did on Icebox, they're feeling confident, it's a 5v4, so they're just gonna honestly aggress on the defense. 
Yeah, first round going to Nova. Gonna allow Nova to buy up here. But Bergen looking to answer with a buy of their own. Not gonna want Nova to actually get a lead this time around. But this is dangerous, Gompers. I mean, if you are forcing up here in round two after losing the pistol, you put yourself in a sticky situation because it's usually the third round that you're meant to win uh, with the rifles versus the bonus weapons. So collecting you of course, of your own is risky. Yup, and already seems like no Birkin didn't oh, no. buy here. Oh, but he's trying to make really 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 really. the neon pick is definitely experimental with Nova. Uh, I like the, 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 the pick. I don't know why I stuttered there for a second. It was like my brain was trying to think of well, do you really like the pick gompers? But I genuinely do. I think I said this before. I I think in general having the I completely forgot her name. The Neon. I think the Neon is actually a great replacement for Jet, but I also said you you generally just have to be extremely yeah. confident and have the big ego. Mm -hmm. I do want to give kudos though to Boop in that previous round, getting a 2k in round two. Not able to close out the round, unfortunately, for their team, but very, very impactful picks nonetheless. And now Nunu has already pushed out through mid once again gonna get the drop on boop here the 4v3 situation nunu already pushing up kevin is unaware that nunu's right around the corner He's missing it in just a split second kevin remaining. getting the one and of course bergen right behind this is a round that might just go into bergen's hand looks like it is working out perfectly, but Beefy's able to get two. It looked like it might have just gone in Beefy's hand for a split second, but Kevin is going to close it off with a 3k. Oh yeah, Beefy being able to get the drop there was huge, but the Vandal is going to reign supreme in that situation versus the Spectre in that long-range gunfight. And now BCC with their first round on the board in this, best, uh, in this map in particular. We are going to see Boop have that null command available, which could be huge for a site execution, but considering the fact that Nova is currently stacked more towards B and mid, it's not going to have as much impact as you would have. There we go. Spot down. Attackers really spawn. Kind of one here, but Cody's gonna end up this round with a 4K to their name, putting a third round on the board for Nova. And now BCC has two ultimates online. Kevin is gonna have that Empress available. Boop will have that null command as well. Hero, one away from that orbital strike but i would like to see in this particular round some ultimate investment going into plus here trying to snag that b alt orb if possible maybe circling back to get the a alt orb as well just to get the lockdown uh, as close as possible to being online to getting the AZ and eco round on out no shock darts are going to come through back to life with the information not going to find anything to move out in mid one and enemy remaining break of their own nova is looking to close out this round that is go, go, go. for one now versus bergen Ooh, nova is really just running it down right now i mean bergen is they're playing farther back knowing that nova is you know electing to push out in these flanks just push out aggressively trying Thank to you. overwhelm bcc as much as possible and i think that actually playing back recently has been detrimental to bergen normally you know that would be a play where you could easily punish nova for their mistakes but I think be, you know a good idea for bergen to maybe sit back wait get information to see where outcome and then you know rush on to whatever oh, might yeah. be the most. And right here. as i say that two picks to their name now it's a 4v3 situation it looks a lot more likely that bcc will be able to convert this round for themselves that leer is going to go in tree 
think that nobody's gonna be checking switch here. DP can really get a pick of their own as well. And now it's 2v2. Hero trying to get that go. point down. Boop. One enemy remaining. From code is gonna get that pick. Boop. Now looking for the ace here. Hero gonna play Angle very kind. Not gonna be ready for that swing though. And Hero is gonna close out that round. Second round on the board now for BCC. 4 to 2. And now BCC. They have three ultimates online, plus the only one away from that lockdown as well. A lot of magic can happen here going into round seven. I mean, if the combinations are able to come out, you know, have have Boop push in using the null command, have that lockdown available for either po the post plant situation or to get onto site would be absolutely massive here for BCC. I have to say that unfortunately it is going to be taken down right off the bat. Spike down, B. One by the light, he's going to get that information, giving very time, the ability to peek. Kevin uh, is going to be duking it out here. He's trying to deal with that raise you too. He's gonna come there. through. Can't let him clutch it out with the ace. It's not gonna happen though. Barry Tyne gonna clutch it out with the 3k to their name. A 4k for Kevin, but not able to end it for their team. But a nice try overall. And now going into this upcoming round, round eight. CC. All ultimates are available. They are gonna need to expend them here as well. I mean Considering the fact that it is the last buy before before BCC is pushed onto a save here, but instead of seeing a buy I'm across the here. board, we're actually seeing kind of an awkward Take this. Uh, half buy from two members and full buy from the others. All right, I know you guys missed my voice. Hello, so sorry. <laughs> um, but <laughs> GP, right down A. You should run. Damage, not a lot. Boop still does have this ultimate. And it is not. Long grenades at least tried to take the last player standing. Lockdown being taken away. Left in the one v three situation. That's gonna be Nova taking six to two. Ooh. Oh my God. I mean, when when Plus is putting down the lockdown in in an aim like that and not using that alarm bot or the there. turret watch the flank that's really a mistake that you can't really afford to be making especially not in a 4v5 situation where you know that the enemy team on the defense is going for these aggressive pushes out and these fast flanks and now bcc up on their final force up before a full save coming out from both i am genuinely kind of confused oh. about their oh. at the moment but Cody is going to be Throwing out that quest, not gonna find anything. Just taking that mid control. Kevin, Empress online. House is cleared. So is the site. Nice Spike down. 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 Nice Will is that Will? Will, yes. Yeah. Yeah. For to Wilkes' name, and now that hunter's fury will be available for the upcoming round. Cody yes. just trying to save that defuse for Nunu here to get that closer and closer to being available, and that is round nine going towards Nova, a five-point lead against SBC on their map pick. Definitely tough considering the fact that BCC is in a 4v5 situation, but Hero does still have the orbital strike available. And if BCC can get some information here on where Nova is holding, where the flanks are coming through, that orbital strike could actually do a lot to try and push onto site. Or, you know, we could see it being saved for the post plant situation, but I do think that BCC maybe needs just the extra help to get onto the site here. He's already rushing through the judgment. And that's one. That's two. That's a possible a. third. Nope. Kevin is going to shut it down. Since he was trying their best drone. to just close it off as quick as possible. But Wilt's trying to gather some information for the fact and that's about to come through. And the hunter. Hunter Fury able to do some damage. Possibly a pick or maybe one enemy remaining. Yep. A pick coming through. 
and the rush, and all Kevin can do is try to get these picks to help. Yeah, the heal couldn't come through. It's just, uh, you know, a really big push from Nova. Ooh. Now we're going into round 11. Two rounds before we swap sides. I mean, if BCC can at least get one more round on the board here, things won't look too bad for them once they swap onto the defense, which in a 4v5 tends to be a little bit easier, especially on a map like Ascent. Um, having that Killjoy kind of just lock down one site for themselves, have three other players spread out, playing farther back. But before we get there, I'm out of here. still the attack for the Well, he has the Odin, but it's not just the rush through one one enemy remaining. Spike down mid. Definitely, I need BT being able to secure that pick for themselves. However, BCC doesn't have the spike in hand right now. I mean, Nova is getting really looking to hunt for that pick. He's just gonna give the information as far as where they are. I guess maybe try to bait them into the judge here. Yeah. Just waiting for them to come through, but just didn't hit the shot fast enough. Last round before the, the switch. And the last round. The last round before the half. My apologies. Yeah, last round before the half. BCC is really gonna have to clutch it up to get 9-3 here. So things don't look as dire before going into the other side. Hero still has that orbital strike available. I might see some ult orb investment going into Kevin here to get that Empress online. As Kevin has been afraid, you know, being quite clutch in some rounds. And this time, looks like it's going to be a straightforward A push from BCC. I cannot Nova. use that. Getting aggressive is <sighs> going to not, not as quick as we but now Nubi is going to be punished. Flashback! Take this! Honestly, what I would do is I would just grab an Odin. I would sit and wait for the push because they like to push together on the side of Nova. And I would just wait. Wait for everyone to cower in my hand. Oh, yeah. Last player standing. Now that sadistic me is gone and <laughs> burned in and you know, completely annihilating everybody here for the third round. It Switching sides. Well in the half, although Bergen has to play the same, possibly, you know, even better in order to one-up Nova here. I mean, th that last round was exactly what Bergen needed. If Bergen can somehow secure this pistol round, allowing them to buy up in the next one as well, uh, the gap will slowly close against Nova. But also keep in mind, I mean, Nova is just fine for the attack with this team composition. Those multiple controllers to their name, they will have that neon wall available to cut off some lines of sight, but otherwise, there are flashes that can come out. There's Ray's utility that you can use to clear these corners as well, and all of go, the shader util just have so much information. The rush, the rush I'm feeling while watching this game as well. Nova, like, uh, pretty locked down and sad. Poop is gonna get one looking for another, and having the ghost very healing time. over here. Only happy the frenzy, trying to get some heads. Poor cat! Something to work out. 15 health left. Can't heal themselves, so they're gonna have to play it a little safe here down in hell. Poop with 22 health left. No one can really help with the trade off. It's Killjoy working their way around, but is Plus going to be able to make it in time? Poop is in a very dire situation, a dire spot indeed. Shutting them down. Ah. Enemy suppressed. That player is standing. Is it enough? Nope, it's going to be real speaking. Ah. Although some of the players are low and the headshot came through, Plus had a really good chance there, but you know, the moment the headshot actually hit, it just, you know, the chances got lower. That's really tough. I mean, in that situation, Plus really did need to push in at the same time as you, but not being able to capitalize on the pinch definitely cost BCC that round in particular. And now we are going to see, you know, that force, or the, the force up coming out from the side of Nova here, and a force of their own on the side of BCC. 
A guardian in hand. Boots could do a lot of work with that. Standing ahead. Good information. Dude is going to push off with that trailblazer. Get inside. Pushing. Nova Boop is able to get one. Kevin with another. And now the numbers are even. The very planted. time is going to limit the numbers as much as possible. Bergen. Boop. Wait. Working. Way up. Only having a guardian in hand. Possibly. One half the bird, standing. But not going to break the spirits of Nova. The double peak swells through. Plus only having a judge in hand. As the door is open, I, I get a little bit scared. Possibly, or possibly, it looked like it would have worked out. But Nunu just hitting the shot, uh, you know, on the forehead. Worked out. Nova 11 and 3. They're about to close this out. Nova's doing a really good job at playing together, pushing in together as a force, just overwhelming the BCC players, considering the fact that they are at that player disadvantage. I would have liked to see Plus come out with that rotation a little bit sooner just to be able to help out Boop once again, but now Kevin looking to get an early pick here in A main with Hero here also to help things out. I think Hero is setting up for that A main and with Smoke as well just to give them as much- I've got your train! I'm out of here! Through the Cody working their way up! Being the neon they are, they could possibly honestly just run in. Having the judge, all you really need is the close corners, closer angles. Oh, look the at this work there. Though. Spike down A. Lurk is perspective, but the, the, the situation at hand is, are they going to make it in time? Everybody on Nova is going to eliminate a ton of the players on Bergen, but it seems like Bergen is having a good time. The Empress is there. Kevin could possibly entry. pop. It might be safe. One and enemy just remaining. In case, and that's one more person remaining on one enemy remaining. They're going to get this pick. Though they need a better weapon. I got they don't really have a lot of range here with the judge. Might just be playing these numbers. Kevin jumping through, but it's going to be Kevin having the better angle. Kevin's a better angle, and the judge be a judge action. And now, going into round 16, BCC finally getting another round on the board for themselves here, are going to be able to afford a full buy up this time around. Nova is going to have to elect for... Uh, not even a save, actually. Nova's just forcing up as much as they can. The only person saving is Wilt on the side of Nova right now. I don't know if BCC is really anticipating for Nova to invest all of their Placing economy into this round to get as many rifles online as possible. Can't use it. Very, very sturdy. Plus was able to get one. They have to get off. Pushing out down, this down A. Now. Last player standing. Spike planted. By themselves, but we've seen the clutch before. The map, all they have to do is, you know, have have very very strong confidence. I'm trying to see what Plus is gonna do here, but I think Plus is actually just electing to maybe go for a save this time around. Not looking to give away their location. Plus, I was hoping that someone on BCC, or not BCC, on Nova is whoa, going whoa, whoa. to get a little hungry for these kills, and nobody really taking the bait, Swamp playing it a little out. bit safer this time around. Plus, he's going to be able to get away with that vandal in hand. Ooh, they might be met here Match by point. Nunu, but it's not going to happen. Not going to catch. Plus off guard this time around. And now, match point here for Nova. BCC forcing up with everything that they've got. And it, it, it's not looking too great, Goppers, to be completely honest. I mean, Kevin does have that Empress online, though. And Kevin has definitely been one of those driving forces on the team, getting those consistent frags as well as alongside Boop. Thanks. So that is a saving grace for BCC. I mean, BC is already pushing in just with the utility of Nova. Nova has a lot of map control here. You can tell that Bergen's trying to gather their way back, taking it. But it, it's just extremely difficult. You already have a ton of the players of Nova protecting. Okay. 
every single site, every single crevice, every one single enemy hole. remaining. No way! Who done? Already, Nova might just be able to close this down as the ultimate pop out. The players are pushing in. Got it. Oh being left alone here in the most recent area with 12 to 4. Old Bergen. Spike landed. Watch up the round. Oh, and the knife! Remaining. The knife almost came through, but was that a throw? Deploying drone. Can we get the ace? Oh, yeah, it's like, it's Attackers like win. Low. Today is not our day to die. Really nice try from Boop though, just try to say, salvage that round, a huge clutch up, being able to get that 4k, unfortunately not being able to secure the ace in that situation, Will is kind of having the advantage there with that positioning, the owl drone coming out at the prime time to tag Boop, Boop up as well, but yeah, definitely a tough situation. We're hoping that the fifth member on Bergen is okay right now, not really sure what the situation is at the moment, just hope that they're safe and sound ultimately that's what matters most over winning valorant games and now you know congratulations to nova for winning this 2-0 and in week one of the njcaae and that is it for gompers and i tonight we will catch you guys next time and stick around for another two best of threes of collegiate valorant
there oh, looking. Oh, that's oh. terrifying. Oh, that's scary. Aiden oh, he's out waiting. the off shot from Chamber. Chamber realizes he cannot take the angle again. He knows. It looks like he he knows that they're gonna stay there looking for him. Saucy boy gets the pick on the nice guy Wayne, who uh, I'm not entirely sure where they were standing out there, but uh, seems Saucy boy knows what they're doing here. Going in with the wolf, trying to scout around, see who's where to give the intel to the team. Ooh, Jet nice tries, pick through the through the smoke. Tries to go for the push. Tries to get at some sort of method going. Just gets shut down left. instantly. They have mid control. The attackers do. They really got to utilize this. They have to get some picks or make a decision on where to go here. Saucy boy, Ooh. little little cut by surprise there by Vague. The food delicious also gets a pick out on the Killjoy, I believe it Ten was. Seconds left. Last player Alpha Ooh. unluckily gets picked off, wall banged by Vague. Is and there enough time to plant? Is there enough time to plant? That is just to the millisecond. Barely. That was within tenths of a second. Sage now walking through tunnels, trying to pick out anyone who's peeking. Yes. Well, as you have time as Sage, you're full health, and in fact, you might be right there with your ult too. I can't see it quite yet. No. Uh, no, not at all. Oh. Ooh, didn't check your corners hard enough. Unfortunately. Thought that it was clear, pushed up a bit too far, and got picked off. It's terrifying being the last person on your team trying to clutch it. Just the pressure is on. Is. Everyone's watching you. <laughs> Everyone's watching. Anyway, um, we got <laughs> ultimates on both sides. We don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> we got the Silva and the Viper alts, as well as knives. Both Vipers have their alts. So you can either push someone off the site or secure your site for a plant. Now, Viper Alt, this would be the one site that would be good to go towards A with. However, if you wanted to try to get through that choke on B, that is another option. Although I don't believe it it's used quite for that. It would be better used for on-site presence. Mm. Saucy Boy's trying to go... Trying to do... I would say pull a little cheeky maneuver here. See if uh, a little can... cheeky flank all the way through tube. Oh yes. See so the, this turret. Is the tube. Turret spots him. He's running. He's like, they know I'm here. Get the turret. Okay. Enemy spotted. And uh, nothing's happening yet. Again, yeah. everyone's Tuck kind lagging of... behind, waiting for the flank. They know that they're there. They know the sky is there. Jet still seems to be in spawn with the spike, not moving on the attacking side. A little curious on what little is going on there. BC, perhaps, I'm thinking. I'm wondering about that, but uh, we, there doesn't seem to be anything happening quite yet. Yeah, I definitely think that there is a DC cap sitting in spawn. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> Click heads. <laughs> Unfortunate. And it was Bean Boy who DC. Probably. Or had some sort of trouble. Now all the plays are happening now on a site. Alpha gets the picks, even taking down the spike towards A site. They got about 10, 10 seconds seconds left. They either gotta get the Last picks or get standing. the spike down. Attackers don't have the time to do this. Ooh. Um, Held down the site really well. Night DC though, sadly, or they're still in. They're still here. It's, into the game. It just seems they're not moving. Hmm. Hopefully that gets fixed. In any case, we w are looking at our economy here. Here's that uh, if you're HCC, you're sitting, you're sitting pretty all right. You you can uh, afford to have some losses. However, you could also just shut it out right here on the side mm -hmm. of Jefferson. However, you need you, to clutch this. You you got you got to bring it back. Yeah, they didn't even use any of their alts. Um, I, I'm not seeing much ability usage as well from them, which I think they really should try to use their Sova until a lot more than what they actually are. Sova just seems to be trying to play for uh, angles to shoot from rather than trying to gain intel for his team. Oh, we do just see like that. 
It's just like I said. <laughs> it, we're, the Utah, intel of this agent is not being utilized as it's needed. At least oh, from yeah. what we're seeing here. The recon bolt, I feel like, is so strong on a map like this that, like, you, you, I feel like you need to kind of know your lineups as so far to be able to get at least a general idea of what's Ooh. happening. Nice little nade goes in, but is not able to take, it's not even able to damage Miles. Yikes. And Miles takes out the Ooh. Killjoy atrocities. It's now a 2v5 situation. Ooh, and that will be game. It will indeed. Hutch. Coming out with the second victory and winning this series. It's soup. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's. Yeah, it's I, unfortunate I, on the DC though. I seeing the very last their top fragger um, stuck in base. Hmm. In our own game, it's usually a DC, but the thing is, I, I'm not too, like, I don't play too many custom games. I don't know if the, the player gets stuck behind in a custom game. Normally, they, they spawn you out, so you have a little extra gold or gold. Yeah, well, in this case, they would get an extra orb in the, mm -hmm. the defending spawn. But uh, as mm -hmm. mentioned, we do not know if that was a DC. We don't have any information directly, but based on what mm -hmm. we could infer from our own playing experience, that's what seems to happen. Mm -mm. But uh, we're going to cut to break for now. We'll uh, be looking to hopefully interview a player here right afterwards. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you very soon. They need to uh, they need to stop this defuse wherever they can. Ooh, unable like to. Ooh. Just like nice that. Tech. Yeah, but the, you're out here for Guardian versus two guys and an op <laughs> being one of them. Uh, the defuse is getting stuck here and the attackers. Uh, secondary healer, for example, Sky. Use their ability to heal. Ooh, Green Boy out with a set of headshots. Getting the double kill here, evening up the odds in their favor. Oh, they get shut down by the attacking Viper. It's a 1v1 situation. Who's going to win it? It is Hutch earning the points. They're playing the long sidelines, which is really good here. Oh! Sadly, they get oh, no. taken down. Curious what Vague is going to do here. Ah, they were looking for the gun. Smart play. But they need to get oh. the picks here, and they do just that. What we had mentioned earlier was a sub in for uh, uh, Jefferson. Deep. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just the back and forth. Oh, Another amazing headshot. headshot. Amazing <laughs> about to see an ace on headshots only? Oh! Oh! Are we about to see... see if we can find the line of sight and Bean Boy shuts down Alpha. That's one off out of the equation. Whether the attacking site picks it back up... Uh, not likely at the moment. Bean Boy's at the right... ...takes the fight here. Honestly, I think you try to play this slow. Don't play the rush. Otherwise, you will get eliminated by nice Ooh. guy Wayne. Him and his guardian. If they're looking to... Ooh, Atrocity's coming in. Not fast enough. Oh. Small little dash into the corner. Throwing out a sub. This is Spear. Coming out with a shorty. Oh, they get Catch him right in the gut. Right at the ankles. Nope, it's gonna be... Coming down from the Viper to get... 
have all stacked. Spray and pray from Saucy Boy. He finds two kicks. Ferguson is not letting Jefferson breathe. As soon as that roll breaks, oh! he's in for a type of gun that is specifically, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Saucy boy.
Aquí.
Welcome everyone to the CENC ECC first ever broadcast of this new league. I'm excited to see how this region does progress, but regardless, we have our two teams ready. CSI going up against Damon College and uh, two you know fairly new esports uh, teams, at least in my experience, haven't seen these teams around Cat Air, so I'm excited to see what these two teams have in store for us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we're incredibly blessed here, Camel. We got the first yeah. broadcast coming out from the East Coast Conference, a new conference, their first season of Valorant, Camel. Mm -hmm. So when you say that these programs are new, this division is new, the league is new, everything is different going forward into this team, and we're lucky to be able to capture it here on Esports U. Absolutely. We do have the maps ready here, so it is going to be ascent first. And uh, then, after that, from just looking for... Actually, no, it's Bind first. Sorry, mm -hmm. Catinator. CSI picked Bind first, the then Damon picks Ascent. It's all good. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, Bind is going to be first, then Ascent, then Haven, or Split, excuse me, to round things off. Damon going to be starting on the defensive side for Bind. Anything you're expecting here to see going in to Bind here? Man... I'm gonna be honest with you, Camel. I played two ranked games of Bind before I got here, and they were they were really bad for me. So really, I kind of got some bad blood with Bind right now. I'm not gonna lie. Oh man, so but you're gonna these, get some okay. These collegiate teams, man, have honestly been very good on Bind. I think it's just the fact that the map's been around for so dang long that it's kind of hard not to know how to play it. We have some recent map changes. I've, I'm sure if you've watched any broadcasts of Valorant in the last two months, you've heard somebody tell you that the short box is small now. So. Mm. There's definitely some changes and it makes it a little bit easier to run defaults. But in terms of college programs, man, it's a lot about early defaults, early conditioning, and that these teams are able to condition good enough that their executes are successful to waste a lot of utility early round. It's usually that is the team that comes up winning. A lot less about just fragging out and more about early consistent defaulting through teams. Absolutely. And uh, already Damon College assembling their roster here. And the one thing that sticks out to me He's at back. least is that Brimstone. He's back. Uh, you know, it's it's really, an, it, it's, an, it's a unique choice. There are, yeah. you know, a, a plethora of other smokers in this game, but you know, Brimstone definitely has some utility that he can really bust out. The lineups could go crazy. Let's see if White Crane has what it takes. Yeah, the lineups could be crazy. It's also an easier smoker to play. It's just mm. the Bracer, 
pop, pop, exactly where I want to smoke is right. down just like that. I will say the counterpart to that we see being hovered right now over the side of Staten Island. They are playing for that Astra, who we know to be the biggest brain controller and quite honestly, the biggest queen controller. She's a queen of Valorant right now when it comes to controlling utility. Just so much control when you get the Nova Pulse, when you get the Gravity Well. And then, of course, the Nebula smokes on top of all of that and you get five per round. So huge for the Astra. And just so much extra map control comes through that way. The brown, I mean, hey, man, it can be cheesy at times, but it definitely has some value as well, especially when you start to get the ultimate in, inbound. You get a lot of uh, conditioning thrown out early. You get positions moved off of. And that could be super big for a map like Vine that has the tight corridor of Hookah and has the, the tight corridor of U-Haul. So in those instances, you get players out with one ultimate. Can be useful. So not to say there's not value with the Brimstone and everything else, of course, kind of talked over at Camel, but... uh pretty standard we got a couple raises in there and that's kind of been pushing through the meta over the jet just teams haven't been opping on bind as much because bind is a map that is very difficult to retake and the sites are so split because there's no mid that you need to have the extra player rifling and when you have uh, a jet on your team they're usually the opera and when they have the op in hand it's hard to retake so you kind of start to see the jet straight away we will get it for one side they're gonna go raise and that's just kind of how it's been as of late well, here we go. Game number one, and potentially a three-game series ECC week one between Damon College and CSI. We'll see where the CSI, CSI attack wants to go first. And it looks like we'll be an A site hit, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it's just going to be a split through main and through showers. That will be as we get underway here early. Look like we'll take this thing quick. Let's just make some noise. Okay, chilling for now, and uh, in the meantime, we'll get a little bit of a break. We now talk about the Chamber's going to be in this one, that up against the traditional Cypher. We've got a very nuanced comp with the Jet, with the Chamber, and that CSI. Yeah, yes, and that's more common, almost beta composition coming out from Damon, which kind of makes me feel like Damon maybe has less of a grip on the game. Not to say that's a bad thing, but more beta composition usually says players haven't been playing as long as we I'm being Sandwell, we'll be forced out of... U-Haul, it's pulled to go to plant. Funny girl, leaves her way inside. We'll be able to find two quick kills. The Smith's away to safety, and Authentic Reina drops as well. So already, Damon College holding things down pretty nicely. Funny girl looking for more shots here on top of 7 IQ. Now it's just a baiting game here. Trash plays. Sneaks inside for one more kill. 3v2 situation. 7 IQ, though. He's got 200 IQ trying to make things happen for his team in a 1v3 situation. The fuse will come in. CSI in a 1v3 spot. Trash plays continuing to tap. White Crane bulldozes down. 7 IQ takes the first round for Damon College. Such a quick retake coming through from Damon. They get that early utility from CSI. And CSI kind of takes a little bit before they actually push into sight. When you see that Brimstone originally was stacked over towards A. And then another B player comes over. So just like that, there's already four on the site when CSI is actually trying to hit. So it's already disadvantageous or at least less advantageous than it could have been if they had pushed early rounds they're playing into a four on five and then bunny girl comes out hits two suddenly the attackers are at a massive disadvantage and damon just is able to steamroll that into early site control they get so much space and they just force that post plan out well we'll see what the situation will be for damon it looks like they're just going to be bonusing just forcing up with these ghosts here trying to make something happen and save up in that economy department oh, csi We'll just play things a little bit more methodically, slow pace this time around. Trying to slowly but surely encroach towards this B side, but we see Moon, her positioning yeah, here inside of Hookah. Now it will be spotted. I don't think that out. broke trip. No, I don't think it did. It did not. And Brett will be able to find a kill on top of the sage. That could be huge. That stalls has pushed so long. Brett, it, you said, going to get a little bit of space here on Rendezvous away to help the team already back towards B. This raise, I think, an anchor. They can anchor two players here and really make this push advantageous. But then again, all that Cypher utility didn't get cleared by that dog, just unfortunately. So Damon got the saving grace right now on B side, and it's kind of stalled this push for quite a bit of time. They're letting Yeti make some space. He's able to grab one. Still one going to be anchored over towards Heaven right now. The rest of the team might just walk away. Yeti calling clears on the A side. The rest of the team going to come over. Huge opportunity for White Crane right now, as they have no idea they're here. It's going to be a timing game here. Yeti continuing to just be a nuisance. Now working through spawn, trying to find some kills. 70 HP in the tank for Yeti. And it's going to be such a timing game. He's going to be found out by Bunny Girl. That's a big heal for the Reyna as well. Get her topped off and leave things in a 3v4 situation in favor of CSI with the plant down the Onus. 
because it's on Damon College to make a move here, Moon. We'll work our way through, be able to find one on top of the chamber. Now the rendezvous will be a non-factor, no time wasting there. Bunny Girl continuing to push forward with the overheal she does have. Try to find these kills. Moving inside, one more kill goes the way of Moon. Bunny Girl continuing to spot the head of Authentic Reyna. Finally, Bunny Girl will get this defused down. We'll look for half seven IQ continuing to buy time, but it's not going to be enough. 3K will come in and barely enough time on the clock. One second, two zero. Did anybody buy into that round? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Now that was interesting. I started to notice that as we got into the retake. The fact that one Damon just recognizes the space that they have with White Crane and still waits on it. Yet he trying to be a nuisance, but they come together CT to play as a three. But the fact that nobody bought, we just basically played a second pistol. And now there's a massive early economic advantage that's going to go forward for Damon. So if they lose this round, they still have another gun buy rather than getting broken eco early, which is really interesting. Something that we almost never see and possibly we'll get the implications of it. Just depends on if they take this round or not. Well, it's an imperfect round for Damon, but they find the round win, and that is it all. It can be imperfect if you don't buy. Zero, exactly. And now, sitting at two zero with the Empress available as a sort of safety net for Bunny Girl, just in case things go awry. And South on top of this site, Yeti will work their way inside of B. Is this the first time CSI have made an attempt towards this site? Now it's going to be looks like a full committal with everyone around. They have the chamber alert bots just in case a flank approaches. Red will check just in case. This could be a full rotation. They have sent four members over towards B, so this could be good for CSI. And yeah, once again, we'll see CI cut noise and absolutely run it down towards the other side of sites here. Only thing is they don't have an early player this time around, so we've got to do all the work manually. Let's we'll start with that blast pack to send in Yeti. We'll get to CT. Good for a first frag yet again. He's been so consistent with that frag. Now we get to see it snowball into the plant to come down, and now a chance for the post plant. DC's been pretty good on the retake, though. And this time around, they hold on to things. Yep, and a 4v5. Damon College have found miracles before. They'll have to be off the back of Bunny Girl once again. With no Illyris, though, we'll be able to spot the skull and bludgeon the raise what for her first kill of this retake. Now a 4v4 situation in the onslaught brewing for Damon College. Continuously, Bunny Girl, unrelenting, resilient in this approach. We'll spot Red for a split second, but Red wins it out. 7 IQ does the same. And now it's going to be a 4v1 immediately a monsoon of aggression working towards CSI's way. And Red finds three. Once again, CSI able to take early aggression towards a site, recognize how quick the rotation from DC comes in, and then rotate back through. Typically, the difference being that they pulled a player early, whether it be their chamber, whether it be their raise, was playing early A these last two rounds, which have been anchoring players onto that A site, so they haven't been able to just cleanly take. This time around, they send everybody towards B and then walk it back. Honestly, surprised to not see Damon College kind of read that. That's been the last two rounds. But hey, we'll get more and more into it as we go. Now we see a different side of CSI going for a more rotation-based style. This time around, we'll leave the spike behind. So this could just be a setup for CSI, but they look to burn utility, use that chamber to re-pick up the spike, and then move towards A. But this time around, the tripwires are set up over towards A short. So you're not going to be able to move through there. Showers, though, is uncontested. We'll see if that does become a factor. CSI continuing just put bits of utility over towards B. Well, yet again, we're going to get the dog out early, which should kill some more utility from DC. They've thrown a lot going in early. Pulse to back of sight. Dog will get information. See the rain all the way towards sight. They'll just walk in for free. White Crane stuck in the back of sight. Nothing to do there. Players towards elbow. They're smoked off now. Makes the retake even harder as Brad's able to find one. Things do not look great for DC on this eco round. And uh, more to fall. It just leaves two. These two of 5v2 situation. Everything working favor of CSI Sandwell will try his best to stop this approach but Yeti will find one more kill. Red works his way in for three and takes down Sandwell there so CSI lose those first two rounds but a great response winning the next two and putting themselves back into this game and you know it, it seems like at this point for Damon College you're gonna need Sandwell to step up in a big way. Bunny Girl has done a great job at looking for those retake angles creating mm -hmm. space for the team and Sandwell will have to do the same. Yeah, that can always be the issue as well. When you've got a player who really is strong in the retake, you start to think, okay, let's we'll play for retake. But then if the rest of the team isn't in that department, you really put a lot of pressure onto their shoulders. So 
maybe time to adapt a little bit, play a little bit harder into the site. But then that also comes down to the fact of how quick they've been rotating, even just in these early four rounds. So you got to see that adjustment come through. Oh! And a late altercation, but still able to find Bunny Girl, even after a plethora of bullets were inside of Brent. We'll try to find one more kill and narrowly almost gets Moon. Showstopper will be used by CSI. Putting the needle as yet, he can't find Moon, but finally with the wall. Is able to sneak in a couple bullets and take down the cypher. Spike is planted, and you have this tour de force to play for a retake scenario. Nah, no need. No need bread. Good for two here, always. Never see him lose these. There's one, there's two. Yes, sir. So easy. We'll recognize the CT angles. They'll walk straight into the crosshair. He's never missing that. He's going to keep that seed operator for another round. And, well, one more victim. A 4K for the chamber. Quite clean indeed. Three to two. Hey, we do say sometimes. The chamber can function as a duelist, especially if they feel really comfortable with those rendezvous. Brett has one there. It allows him to get back to short if he needs to, but instead, hey, he just takes the fights and wins them. You can tell he's feeling it. He's got six bullets. <laughs> yeah, if you repeat that, reload. you're feeling it. Yeah, you're repeating that with six bullets. Brett, he's on it. Yeah, for right now, at least, he is definitely feeling himself three rounds in a row here for CSI trying to maintain and continue the snowball advantage over Damon College. We're able to find those like first two rounds. Yeah, but this is a good uh, B stack. We'll see, because they've started B every time, pretty much. Yeah, I really like the B stack because exactly that. The default's been B consistently. I think his bunny girl peeks out so early. I'm pretty sure I had a judge in her hand. So yeah, interesting info peek, especially when you've got your Cypher on site, they just throw cam, but uh, hey, sometimes you get a little overzealous for the play that you would hope to come, would happen. Great dart to come through. Moon will walk straight through the backside of tube and authentic. Yeah, buddy, that's wall bangable. See you later next round. Try again. Eco, they stacked for B, and well, they're slowly dwindling numbers. And look at CSI, they'll recognize. Yet again, they send Yeti all the way down through A side early. He says, yo, this is open, guys. And you'll see the rotation come through. Spike's on its way now. You know, first frag came through from Authentic. They were looking for a little bit more. They did give a Vandal over. Maybe DC saves this. They don't have much anyway. Just send the last two. Save the Vandal. Sand will fall to bread. Totem set up. Bread thinking about the push. So we'll Good think about the push and we'll find the push. Good for one more. On top of trash plays, White Crane turns the blind eye and cold. It's going to be a shivering shot. Finds White Crane. Makes this one a 4-2 to two in favor. CSI, you have clearly ramped up in terms of pace and really are now setting the tone in terms of what Damon College are doing. But like you said in that previous push, Bunny Girl peeking out, that was definitely what cost them at least, you know, the B-sided contest, but A was just completely cleared off. Well, that one, we, we can give kind of an excuse, right, Camel? I mean, yeah. they're B-stacking. They're, they of course, there's nobody A. All good. Back to the gun round. Don't do it again. And that they won't. They've split back up. Actually looking to stack the extra player towards A here. Interesting, because a lot of our finishes do end up going B. A lot of early aggression ends up going B, just gets stunted, and then the rotation comes through. So I guess the thought is, if they're finishing A regardless of where we put players, let's just put them A to begin with. And we'll see if that is situation works for Bunny girl, good for one. Sandwell backs up her teammate. And is able to find Brett as well. So that's been the hot hand for CSI. Gone and dusted DC. A great position here as the updraft will be used. Sandwell popping the daggers, looking to go aggressive. Float his way over towards the CSI skulls in short, but CSI a bit timid with this push. Don't want to go too aggressive. They still have a couple of ultimates to use. It could be a winnable round if any of the DC members get overzealous. It's authentic. Randy going to be able to pop the Hunter Shuri looking for a bit of intel on where these players are. Won't find much luck. No, they will not. Looks like they might consider cutting noise and walking back, which would be a change. We typically see them when they get stunned in the early round, walk straight to the other site, and you'll see the rotation come through from the Sage early. They'll look to split 3-2. Keep presence just in case. Cypher all the way up shower now. Going to give a little bit of misinformation as this push now comes towards trial. short. Dog will come out. That's going to sell that information that they are indeed going to the A site. There's the divide. Money girl. We'll try to find one, but cold. Okay. Right there with her. Have to take down the reign of the Brimmel. Good ult from stop plant. Trying to dissuade Good cold. Ult. But the plant went down. So the plant is going to go down. The owner sits on DC to make a move here. Authentic Reina. Lurking in the shadows, waiting for this divide and to go I'm... down. The timing. Oh, it's so close. And while waiting. Where's the strike? Will spot the Sova. Look for the daggers inside. Taking the shank through. 
And Sandal gonna pop the dash as well. Good fake. Authentic Reina still in a bit of a joust here. White Crane can be able to find one. It's a pincer maneuver on top of Authentic Reina as Sandwell slices his way through you all and the defense will pick up their third round man that orbital strike really really awesome. dismantled the post plant before it even really got started i mean in fairness reyna kind of has to play towards lamp there it's the only spot left open out of the ult so can't cross the short they definitely have time to get back in a way after it's gone doesn't stop plant as you mentioned but it does kill planter which gives then a double advantage going to players, a four to two for the retake, and they just honestly run it down. They trust the teammate, they trust the trades. And I mean, the op could have moved later, but it's that panic that gets induced from that strike that really makes that retake incredibly easy to you win. You want to play? Let's play. Towards the B site we go for CSI as the Tour de Force will be summoned by this chamber, looking to gain some leeway with that almighty weapon. As for the time being, you still have Authentic Reina pushing so far forward in A and even finding a kill on Trash Plays. And that might sell the A side push as well, but now they're going to see the dog. Now they're going to see the util over towards B. And they still have no idea what to do. They're still leaving two players at A. Yeah, because there's been consistent conditioning from CSI that a player, regardless of where you see utility early, is go getting through A. And it really is getting to Damon, you can tell in later stages of this round. Now that they've seen Reyna, they recognize, okay, maybe it's just the Sova. And they'll start to finally move over, plan to go down as well. They'll really sell the fact that, guys, they're here, I promise. Every rotation will come through. Once again, we see Damon on the retake. Can they win it out? They just did. But now, d number disadvantage, Camel. Numbers disadvantage. They do have the Empress along with the neutral theft. So potentially, if one kill goes the way of Moon, she'll be able to pop that ultimate and go to work. But so far... Very steadfast hold from CSI. Both sides lingering around the site. Bunny Girl will be the first to pop the Leer, but that's the only flash they'll have for this retake now. It's going to be so, so daunting. So, so difficult. 7 IQ will be able to find oh, one weaving his way inside as Cold, who sneaks away with two kills. And now it's going to be difficult for Moon. Bread right between the uprights. Able to find Moon, find the Cypher. And that Tour de Force so difficult to deal with. And CSI so difficult to deal with. Once they get that plant down, the self authentic Reyna priceless yeah and you mentioned that leer it goes down so early before anyone's really even able to peek off of it right and we don't get any we just don't get any trades man we see dc come in and it's very one man oriented for every player peeking and it makes it so much so much more difficult for them to clear any space once they do get info from that first player dying no one's there to trade it no one's there to take that space once a trade comes through it just kind of stagnates the retake before it can even get started now Catinator, mm -hmm. Sage Wall here from Trash Early, plays. Early Short Wall is not bad, but you consider the fact that they haven't really been here one time. This is the first time they've got Short Contact. It's kind of coincidental that uh, Early Short Control for both teams have it the same round. <laughs> Hello, I see your gun. Sorry, buddy. Oh, okay, give him a second. That's the side as well. Looking for a third. Yeah, I coming into his own. Okay, not a third. Fred will take it away instead. Still U-Haul player. Do they know about it? No, they do not. Well, they do now. And... Woo! <laughs> Fred will crouch, let his teammate shoot over his head. Little fire fire. Regardless, 3k, 6-3 to three for CSI. Yeah, that's just kind of unfortunate, Camel, that both players, both teams went short of the same round. No one's been considering the fact that a uh, shower existed until right now. Like, can you blame them, man? They're halfway through the half, mm. thinking a little dirty. Got to get clean. Come down to shower, and, well, who do they meet? So, yeah. Um, so I think for colleges, man, those uh, those showers are communal. <laughs> true 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 but clearly the damon college has been a common theme as we can see uh the tab there each win has been off of these diffuses it's been off of these retakes damon college are willing to give csi the space but because they can't hold the site it's just so quick to get onto this site get these kills now looking yeah. for two right on top of moon and the cypher drops bread feeling himself here looking for more He's going to look for another scrap inside of CT, waiting for his moment to strike. It's going to be a timing oh, factor over towards these players in heaven. They don't know, and Fred does. He'll be able to find one looking for two. He does the, the 4K for Fred, and they kill every single member. He's going to look for White Crane. Can't find the brim, and the Stinger wins out. But Fred, clearly the breadwinner here for CSI. Dominant, and I mean, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he's like, what is it, 20 and 4? It's something crazy. Yeah, can we get a tap? Thank you. 21 and 4. Don't... Don't discredit him. Sorry. There's an sorry. extra kill there, pal. <laughs> Lucky you said, or something. Gonna tag my dart, just looking to play some exits here. Might walk in with this rifle, which is interesting. The rifle has some value. Well, 
not anymore so click dust on the floor seven to three the csi will take yet another round and you are right camel all of these round wins for damon have come off of the retake but it's we've got to push a very very heavy push and pull from this team whether they want to play close contact try to hold sight or they want to play for retake the times we've seen them play for retake we saw them give some space on pistol which they won that round we saw them give space for the second pistol that happened because csi decided not to buy once again retake off of bunny girl it's a lot easier to multi-frag on the pistol i reckon and the last round just comes once again from a big play it's just the struggle to decide what they want to do because they don't have a ton of team utility we mentioned they don't have the astra to stop control so it's kind of hard not, not to give the side away quite frankly once again Psych clear mood will be in an altercation with bread no help to hp there's She's no help spotted here. by the drone she'll be hunted down yeah, he'll be able to click up the kill take down the cypher the flash will be used as well there is a flank Spike imminent planted. but will it even matter will every single member of Taman college be dead before then in a 4v4 situation even the seekers are available for csi as white crane slowly dipping his way around this site looking for his opportunity to strike concealed I'm inside of the smoke trail. He worms his way through along with trash plays, but the Seekers will be used, and that gives notice on where these players are. White Crane drops and leaving it at a 4v3, but a crucial 1v1 with 7 IQ. But the Astro will win out. And that potentially remaining. will be CSI winning things off as 7 IQ field himself there with a 3k, and the Domino is falling so gracefully for CSI as they pick up the raid round. round. Great Seekers to come the through. Switch. They recognize that even though numbers are even right now, even though they have advantages coming through with the Astro utility still the fact that they don't want dc to get any sort of control because they don't want this team to have a rebuy going into this round to get any sort of momentum into the half so just throw the seekers out screw it no shame in throwing them get the early information then they shut down the retake before it can happen but the fact that yet again you see i wish we had a telestrator white crane is all the way in the back of elbow in the meantime moon is playing back of sight so there's already a disconnect from the play, team there on the defensive play. side of one of them is initially playing for retake and the other is playing to hold the site. So there's no help for Moon. Gets absolutely ran down by five players and you can't win that. You're not going to win that. Tens don't win that, man. It's just how it goes. It's just this lack of cohesion for the defense to decide how they actually want to play the defensive side that's been the issue. Ooh, buddy girl will get spotted. Pushing very far forward through Hugo will disengage from that engagement. And this will just be the rotation. I mean, they're, they're content as Yeti, uh, yeah, along again, with cleared out the site, but there was a Sage, Trash plays waiting for her moment to strike, but oh. Yeti, right on top of the skull, clubs the Sage. It will be good for one. The Showstopper will be used as well, just to dissuade any sort of momentum-building process Damon could look for. Sandwell, though, will be able to find Brett. A good response to leave this at a 4v4. Grimmelt is available for Damon College. We'll see if they opt into that. Yeah, that was a big factor in that last retake. The retake that was on the gun round came through off that orbital strike killing planter and the rest of the team able to find their way in. Hop's gonna be close. Good for the first, not that Rain able to pull the trigger. But a girl to get a quick trade, orbital strike is through. It'll go over towards you U-Haul, but it hasn't caught anybody. <clears throat> now the wall goes down very late into the post plant. Great call to come through from CSI, but then Rain to find another. So that wall stalls any information, makes it so much harder. But it does give opportunity for White Crane here, who's going to be heard by the Astro, though, who's stuck towards Bench. Pops off the Diffuse, not quite able to find it. Up and Grain will have that last up shot to go through as well. 9-3 to three on the half of CSI. Absolutely get it together. Switching sides. They get it together. They win. You see in the tab there, the last eight of their nine. I mean, really just, just so sad. So sad to see. And it's been off the back of Brett. 21, 6, and 4. And now they're moving to the defensive side. You usually think of Chamber as more of a defensive oriented uh, agent. But like you said, you know, offensive Chamber. Chamber duelist meta uh, for Brett, clearly. As he stepped yeah. up in a big way and put the team on his back. Yeah, team is living on Brett's back right now, man. And uh, this round might as well. So we're going to get a short early. Going to get early information and that's going to lead to what should be a quick rotate the b for the astro to come back over It'll also mean those stars get pulled up pretty soon i don't know how many stars 7 iq actually has this round so we'll see it a little bit later okay two more so we'll have the opportunity to pull stars as they just pulled one this is b push starts to work up a short that comes info they have early and they're already on the flank they're already about to peak these hookah players there's the peak 
Good for one. Good for two. Just like that. Already gone because they're trying to play this very slow play towards B, but they have nobody else towards the other side of the map. This chamber now going to lurk. Going to let the Reyna walk into them. Bread to find yet another frag. And that just leaves players towards long. They're going to go for a rotation. But look who stayed. It's the Astra. They never left. They're ready for this play. Remaining. 7 IQ flawless. looking like 700 right now. It'll find both frags. 10 to 3. It's flawless coming forward. You got you to gotta make a decision there, Camel. If you want to play slow up B long, somebody has to have some sort of control on the other side of the map. Or at least a trip has to go down on the other side of the map, right? To recognize mm -hmm. if we don't have control of this angle, we need to know info. Right. But they don't have any info there. And of course, you don't expect a team to walk up a short, sure. But it's always a possibility, and that's why a lurk agent is so important. The trip goes down now. Good correction. Okay. We love well, that. We'll see it. We absolutely do. It'll stop potentially. Not shower, though. Not shower. And that's the problem. Once again, that we see an aggressive push through B, and it might be Yeti finding another early kill. Bread will be good for one on top of Bunny Girl. Yeti finds Moon. And just like that, CSI themselves in a 5 at B3 situation and things have just got a whole lot harder for Damon Yeti going to be good for one more Sandball from downtown with 25 HP left in the chamber looking to spar with Yeti but Yeti soars his way over that satchel makes it easy takes down the jet and now White Crane all on his lonesome will be hunted down will be swarmed by these hungry seething csi defenders bread loops around the corner and is able to find the brim easy pickings for csi their second flawless in a row all right we've reached a slight problem here if you're a game college fan csi have recognized one fatal thing mm -hmm. they can win the fights right which is why you see them pushing then again that is technically an eco round so okay. CSI should win the fights. They have better utility. So now the change that DC needs to make is to recognize this team likes to push us. We just saw them push us twice. We need to really slow down, slow the default, and just hold angles. Let them walk into us. Easy peasy. But once again, back to the B side default. Taking a page here out of CSI's book, trying to work through some of this utility. Scout will be there. We go. There. We set the default. Perfect. Perfect. And now this could be an option to go for a rotation back over towards A as Trash Plays is certainly prioritizing this site. But we see where Bread's positioning is up top, elevated. Bunny Girl going to be flashed for days. Trash Plays, though, will be able to win out that 1v1 with Bread. Well, him. So this should allow a push towards A, potentially cold. We'll shut down Butter Girl. That's one of the main flashers. Really the only one, and nobody watching you all. Yeti off the flank. We'll blow down Trash Plays. The Sage is gone. Yeti good for one more Sandball drops instantaneously it's gonna be a 4v2 and yeti stands his ground steadfast over towards you all yeah no initial clear able to find the first and then just makes a play to get the second as well massive 2k to come through once again shower presence is going to move away to try to help their teammate short to look for the trade and that's information gained from the astros now all three players on site just have to look towards short Last yeti will jump up towards standing. the top of box able to find the first off the tank and the fourth will come with it as you know, they, they always say in the Match tips, Cam, like, if your primary runs out, just switch to the secondary faster than reloading and clinical example. Spec you out of bullets, time to pull out the ghost, finish your job. And uh, now it just looks like they're having fun. Authentic Reyna, he's like, guys, I got this. Give me the operator. Let me go to work. And, you know, he's still positive. He's six and four. Mm -hmm. He hasn't seen mm -hmm. much action. And that's just because... Red and Yeti are just farming that, the kills. It's not his that fault. That is true. That is true. Okay. Wow. A slightly a slightly harder default this time around. Once again, still nothing shower that hasn't changed. And all right, we get the chamber up it. Okay, well, maybe he don't got it. You know, yeah, it happens sometimes. Finger slipped. All good. Red's gonna walk all the way through. The brim possibly heard this. He started running pretty soon. I don't know. Sure they didn't. No, another team has turned, so sure they didn't. Joe Stopper to grab one, and Brett in perfect position. That he's going to hear those steps. Player going to walk around Fountain. Timing is huge for Brett here. As they try to clear the box, get to find another. So Brett can't even capitalize on the opportunity. Now he might get timing again for the player coming to the back of mid-market. Able to find one. The Brimstone going to be behind in here. Should be good for one. And then have to find one more. The race over for sight. We'll be good for that. Gun in hand. Spike down for now. And you know he's not going to reload. This is it. Nah, One shot here one's for Yeti. All he needs. 
Yeah, three to twelve. Looking to make this three to thirteen. I like that. White crane will slowly look to anticipate an altercation and engagement, but this operator hawking over the spike, waiting left. for his moment, prowling his yeti, waiting for the oh, flank, waiting for the he push. Needs. He doesn't find the shot. He will throw the paint shells to dissuade the approach. And now Damon College, 20 seconds here to save yourself in game number one. White Crane will look to push his way inside. It's a 1v1 and Yeti Defenders right win. between the eyes. A shot so crispy, the Colonel would be honored. And Yeti ends the game hotter than fish grease there. 3K to start things off on that last round, finishing it off in great fashion. Catinator, what a showing in that first game. And those first two rounds, you know, went towards Damon College. But in the end, they just couldn't get any more momentum after that and for the dolphins you know i mean dolphins are a very smart animal you know and um they showed us oh no absolutely i gotta ask you a question though camel how hot would you say that fish grease is it's pretty hot uh, how's it's... the csi offense perhaps i i i think so I nah, mean, it, saw... it can't be it can't be that hot there's no way there's okay, no way we'll you see, see those we'll, We'll see. We'll see in game two uh, what these two teams have in store for us. It will be a scent. So we'll see how Damon College can respond after a pretty underwhelming first game. But plenty of time to bounce back here against the Dolphins. 1-0 CSI. We'll be right back after a quick break. Approachable spot bread for a split second. The bread wins it out. Seven IQ does the same. And now it's going to be a 4v1. Immediately a monsoon of aggression working towards CSI. Always, never see them use these. There's one, there's two. Yes, sir. So easy. We'll recognize the CT angle. They'll walk straight into the crosshair. He's never missing that. We keep that seal operator for another round. And, well, one more victim. A 4K for the chamber. Fight clean and would hope to come. Could happen. Great dart to come through. Moon will walk straight through the backside of tube and authentic. Yeah, buddy, that's wall bangable. We'll see you later next round. Let's try again. Eco. The Sova looks for the daggers inside. Can't get the shake through. Sandal gonna pop the dash as well. Good fake. Authentic Rain is still in a bit of a joust here. White Crane can be able to find one. It's a pincer maneuver on top of Authentic Reina as Sandwell slices his way through. You decide as well. Looking for a third. Yeah, I coming into his own. Okay, not a third. Fred will take it away instead. Still a U Haul player. Do they know about it? No, they do not. Well, they do now. And. Woo! <laughs> Fred will crouch, let his teammate shoot over his head to the final side of the dog. It's 3k, 6 to 3. The wall goes down very late into the post plant. Great call to come through from CSI. I think Rain has to find another. So that wall stalls any information, makes it so much harder. But it does give opportunity for White Crane here, who's going to be heard by the Astro, though, who's stuck towards Ben. Pops off the diffuse, not quite able to find it. I think Rain that will have. Sandball from downtown with 25 HP left in the chamber, looking all on his lonesome. Will be hunted down, will be swarmed by these hungry, seething CSI defenders. Bread loops around the corner, is able to find the brim. Easy. That's information gained from the Astros. Now, all three players on site just have to look towards short. Yeti will jump up towards the top of Box, able to find the first off the tank, and the fourth will come with it. As you know, they, they always say in the tips, Camel. Oh, it's not all he, needs. he doesn't find the shot, he will throw the paint shells to dissuade the approach. And now, Damon College. 20 seconds here to save yourself in game number one. White Crane will look to push his way inside. It's a 1v1 and Yeti. Defenders. Continuing to spot the head. Continuing to spot the head of Authentic Reina. Finally, Bunny Girl will get this diffused down. But look for half seven. I keep continuing to buy time, but it's not going to be enough. 3K will continue in this approachable spot. Bread for a split second. The bread wins it out. 7 IQ does the same. And now it's going to be a 4v1. Immediately a monsoon of aggression working towards CSI. Always, never see them use these. There's one, there's two. Yes, sir. So easy. We'll recognize the CT angles. They'll walk straight into the crosshair. He's never missing that. We keep that seal operator for another round. And, well, one more victim. A 4K for the chamber. Fight clean and would hope to come. Could happen. Great dart to come through. Moon will walk straight through the backside of tube and authentic. Yeah, buddy, that's wall bangable. We'll see you later next round. Let's try again. Eco. The Sova looks for the daggers inside. Can't get the shake through. Sandal gonna pop the dash as well. Good fake. Authentic Rain is still in a bit of a joust here. White Crane can be able to find one. It's a pincer maneuver on top of Authentic Reina as Sandwell slices his way through you. Decide as well. Looking for a third. Yeah, I coming into his own. Okay, not a third. Fred will take it away instead. 
still a U-Haul player, but they know about it. No, they do not. Well, they do now. And woo! <laughs> Gretel Crouch let his teammate shoot over his head to a final Cyrus. Now they're 3K, 6 to 3. The wall goes down very late into the post plant. Great call to come through from CSI. I think Rain has to find another. That wall stalls any information, makes it so much harder. But it does give opportunity for White Crane here, who's going to be heard by the Astro, though, who's stuck towards Ben. Pops off the defuse, not quite able to find it. Up and Rain, that will happen. Sandball from downtown with 25 HP left in the chamber, looking all on his lonesome. Will be hunted down, will be swarmed by these hungry, seething CSI defenders. Bread loops around the corner, is able to find the brim. Easy. And that's information gained from the Astros. Now, all three players on site just have to look towards short. Yeti will jump up towards the top of Box, able to find the first off the tank, and the fourth will come with it. As you know, they, they always say in the tips, Cameron. Oh, it's not all he, needs. he doesn't find the shot. He will throw the paint shells to dissuade the approach. And now Damon College, 20 seconds here to save yourself in game number one. White Crane has to look to push his way inside. It's a 1v1 and Yeti. Welcome back, one and all, to the Esports U Network. We are following the ECC, the East Coast Conference today, and we just got a hell of a best of one, Camel. Or a hell of a map one for the best of three. Right. Absolutely. Except I got a little confused, too. Salt. I got a little bit confused. I didn't know what we were doing. He I said, thought, we're done? I thought the rules changed halfway through. But yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, we just saw that map one uh, from the Dolphins. Clearly put on a clinic 13 to three. And I have to ask you, Catnator, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. what do you think uh, Damon College can do differently? Do you think it's more of an agent pick? Do you think it's more of just, you know, their overall team coordination? How do you see this team thriving on this map too? You know, it's honestly a hybrid of both of these things. We, we talked going into the agent select like that we got a very almost beta-esque composition with the sage with the brim it just kind of looks like this team is in this situation where you can get to a lot of the time in club collegiate esports where bro we're trying to play the season we need some homies to play the season and they right. scrap together for you my my university is the same way man we've got a rocket league grand champ filling for us this season and he only plays sage that's just how it goes because sage is the, an agent that's easier to play and if you do it right can be super useful so it's a mix of the fact that the agent composition is just a little bit old school. It doesn't meet the meta as well. And then the fact that if you're going to use that composition, you have to play it a little bit differently. And we saw them definitely struggle on the defensive side of things to discuss when to play for retake, when to hold close contact. And it's just that lack of coordination really got players into 1v4s, 1v5s. And that's just not winnable. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if Damon can claw their way back into the series. As White Crane will go back towards this brimstone bunny girl will go back towards this reina so those two things will stay the same interesting uh, the sage will probably to come see. back to yeah i'd imagine so and we'll see on this other side is yeti will switch up from the rays over to the sova and now rain authentic reina not gonna go reina so reina in the hmm. title clickbait i'm i'm upset you know the the ability for collegiate players to flex is so fantastic oh i agree the fact that reina played the Sova on bind and is now giving the Sova away Choose to their duelist agent. from last map really speaks to the fact that these guys got to be scrimming lineups in a way that it's like you learn lineups for this map all along maybe everyone knows lineups man all five of them they just pass the roll around super interesting stuff to see come forward same composition comes through for Damon only difference being they'll run a sky and they'll give him a little bit of additional power going into sites also going into their retake that flash would be useful than having just those two leers we talked a little bit about how those leers positioning also made it hard for them to even kind of break the ice of the post plan initially so 
There's that factor. We'll see how it plays. And then the Sage Ball is still pretty good for a cent, but it's a matter of uh, when you put it up. And we see a lot of that utility goes through kind of early because of how much stall CSI throws to us. They throw all this aggression early. They say, we're going, we're going, we're going. Then they cut noise. And in the time that they're going, 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 we see all that util come out from Damon early. So if they can hold on to the wall, there's actually a good chance they have a lot of stalling power here and they really make the difference. Then again, no Astra. We'll let it play out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what does transpire. I think the Brimolt has some good uses, especially considering, you know, uh, towards B, a lot of players like to play inside a boathouse. That can be mm -hmm. a really favorable position to go for that Brimolt, but we'll see if that does end up flourishing. If White Crane can find that sort of success they've been wanting from this Brim, using those stimmies, buffing up these duelists, and giving Bunny Girl and Sandwell space to play as CSI starting on the attacking front. We'll look to push towards mid as a collective unit of three. They use the scout as they make their way inside the market. Bunny Girl sparring with 7 IQ along with Yeti, and you do not win that 2v1 10 HP on the Sova. Yeti. Low of wind will take down trash plays in a great position. This is the break with oh man, we'll end up dying the cold. And it took a bit of time. Spike now down. Now the deprived defense here for DC still in a 3v3 situation. White Crane holding his ground. And the cavalry will approach. Brett takes up. Okay, we've got a late lurk from the jet, a player mid, and the spike B main. I don't know what happened for CSI here. I don't know if they just miscommed it. So Jet tries to play through Cat. The rest of the One team is dying remaining. on sight. 1v3. Interesting. Okay, Reyna will come back through. The Lord good for a frag. And they recognize if Reyna just walked all the way through A, it's probably backside B. And that they make contact with initially. Recognize the Brim's there. So they get the plan on A. They recover the round anyway. A very interesting mid-round positioning from the team, though. No stars. Or 7 IQ here. Won't be able to pull White Crane off of this defuse if he does end up getting to that point. We'll see, though, CSI setting up their line of defense. The wall being set up here against White Crane. We'll look to push his way inside. Has one smoke. Will that become a factor? 70 HP. Getting lower and lower. Trying to find these things. Cannot do it. Authentic Reyna scores away and right between the uprights. Is able to find the brim. By the first round win as well. So they get back together towards the end of the round. They solved the problem. All good. First round one for CSI here. And uh, they'll look to buy up this go around so we don't get the Damon College Classic from out number one of a second pistol round. They'll go ahead and buy. We get the Guardian out from out there to Grana. Honestly, we've been seeing a lot of that now. Duel is just going straight for rifles. Typically, they'll go light armor and just buy the whole dang thing. They'll grab a Vandal. They'll grab a Phantom. This time around, it is going to be the Guardian, so a little bit of a lighter item to lose. Those implications to come later, they're all going to go early in the A. I think CSI just hits this. Yep. So much confidence in trash plays. Here's the blind eye, but look for the blinding light as well. Taking a barrage of bullets as red. We'll be able to find Sandwell continuing to march forward to CSI with so much confidence oozing through their veins. And now Authentic Reina playing inside of the smoke as well. The confidence proving. 7 IQ will go for the plant. The scout will spot out with Jet. He will be forced to back away, but the spike is already planted. CSI doing their due diligence, but Bunny Girl will be able to find one. That's a good response, but yet he takes that white crane. Turn on the flank. Now broken. Astra going to be nearby, and that'll pull off that Reyna. So that Reyna's going to be a long time coming before they're able to help on this retake. In the meantime, Yeti's going to grab yet another from Scaffold. Dart will grab Moon if he doesn't back away, and they will. No scan, but no time really left for this retake either. Looking to kill some eco potentially. It's funny with the Spectre in hand. Gonna spray through the door. Honestly, it's worth just jumping in through this nebula and just working for anything. He's not damaged. Do exactly that. Lion Bottle be there, so that you have the frag. And Moon got to die to spike here. Got to die to something. Okay, we're good. And they'll kill a gun. Hey, we like that. We like that. It's worth it. You're typing worth in, uh, in all chat there for sure, right? I'm just screaming it down comms. Absolutely. Well, we'll see if that could be a small glimmer of hope for Damon College as will be a couple of Phantoms, the Vandals, etc. Buying up here for Damon College will be a Spectre and an Ares for Moon and Trash Plays. But we'll see on the other side a bit of a disheveled buy for CSI. 
because they're just going to have to save this. Why? Just use like, well, no, no. Well, Why listen, is this listen. not a full buy? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little. Why odd, is it? It? for a second I thought that was guns were saved. Right. <laughs> it got me so off guard. That is very chaotic. Okay. Uh, we're missing a couple guns here just for the sake of missing them. Initiate double initiate utility to come out. Dart wise and go on a trash plays and authentic granted take out one player with an actual gun in this round able to pick up the frag. We'll step away back towards the back side. Of the yeah. So we got even numbers to retake. For the four situation. Zero side put the onus on the Cold to get the one, takes down Sandwell. And it will be a 4v3 situation for CSI. They've been in the situation time in and time out and have worked it flawlessly. And we'll see if there is a Leer. No Leer for Bunny Girl. So this is going to be so difficult to get back onto site and try to dissuade player these players from approaching. Ooh. And it's two instant kills. It's a swift one. This Cold picks up three. And the third round for CSI. And it's just so difficult. Once. That sky goes down. There's no way to get back on it. That's why it's so crucial for trash plays to stay alive because they've been playing for this retake every single time. It's just so difficult without those flashes. Okay, I could give you one reason for half buying there if you're any player on Damon, and we just lost it. The one reason you could have is because you want to play for an op. So if you win that round, you have the extra money and you can upgrade. But now that they've just bought down yet again into this round, and Muna's Force tells me that that was not the rotation, so we just vibe it differently. Good wall to come through early. Dog's gonna be there. So Moon spotted out now, but rotations are gonna come through in wave. Wouldn't be cautious here because they've been faked a couple of times before, but they're gonna find that first dragon. We're gonna sight just like that. No extreme utility to stop things off. They're just trampling through this demon college defense that is non existent. And they are thwarting off this defensive hold. The Sage Ball. Up over the avenue, 7 IQ will spot trash players for a brief moment. Go for a bit of pump shots, but that will be all. Back to Drana. Take out Bunny Girl, takes out Sand well as well. The duels are gone. The sky is gone as well. One Good more, and White Crane will get folded up like a lawn chair. And CSI pick up their fourth round, and it really just looks like the same thing we saw last time around on Bind, now moving over to a set. Okay, we're going to run into a struggle really quickly here with the DC economy. Oh, no. Because we've gone... We got a little bit of a bump in the road when we had that life bike come through from two players. It split the economy up to the fact that they decided to force last round because two players did have money for rifles. Now it's the same thing again because the economy is stagnated from all of these players. So we see right, we see a Spectre light armor come out, a Stinger light armor come out from Moon and Trash Play because they don't have the money for rifles. But rather than full saving here and just taking a round loss, they're going to look to force and try to win this one. If they win it, they're fine. If they lose it, they're going to have to save next round, and then we go back and forth and back and forth. Will it be an A hit sandwich? Crucially, he's going to find a couple of kills. He will be blinded. Looks for the dash to reorient himself, but he's taken down immediately. Bread, good for two. It'll be a staunch push on top of a committed, determined discipline. Is remain. CSI Yeti? Pick up one. Cold. Pick up one as well. CSI Spike doing a great job here in a 4v1 situation. Bunny Girl will slowly tiptoe her way over towards Zay, but it's going to be a rude awakening as they're all just waiting for this random to approach. Waiting they are, and trigger pulled for Bread, a 3k to come through for the sky, and that'll make it a 5 0 scoreline. And well, the ongoing saga of economic despair, we'll see where it's led us to. Because technically, they could force find this round if they wanted to. And they're no strangers to the force. Oh my goodness, we are watching an episode of Star Wars. We're going to get a force to come through. Trash Play, Samuel, Moon all have money for full buys this round. If you're going to force, you might as well just full buy for the rest we of you, your players. Just give them rifles. Okay. Um, so we got a, we've got a light buy that is technically a force buy because two players are going to have money to buy next round, which is what you additionally would see happen. Great seekers to come through. White Crane caught out a pizza. First try to go through. That's all mid market controlled early. CSI still switching things up. They're still giving so much respect to their opponent. You got to, just in case you don't want any shenanigans to come through. Close CT shots not going to quite be there. One so enemy remaining. Just a little bit faster. Try to pick up two. The frags come in waves. They swing through CT. Very clean execute all the way through from CSI. They moved through market, through pizza. It's a pizza party for CSI, and everyone's invited. Clearly, five remain alive through that entire wave of aggression. Now, with the judge in hand, it's almost a formality, and it will be bred. 
will be able to pick up his third kill in this round. A flawless for CSI. 6-0 to zero for them as well. Clearly firing on all cylinders and, and making this look easy. I told you mm -hmm. that two players were going to have money this round. You did. They have bought rifles. Mm -hmm. One of them has bought full armor. The rest are light. And we still have a light by going through from two players of white grain and trash blaze who could technically fold by this round because they have the extra money. Yeah. But it will not happen. I think everybody's buying utility every round at least, so we're still getting full utility. Great recon, great pull to get Moon out early. That's gonna oh, be a swing. Wow. That's gonna be a frag. Great utility all the way through from CSI. That's side open. Flank on the way, but once again, be caught by Lurk of the Turret. One day. Sambo the wrong way. Brettley good for one, good for two. The domino is falling. The flies are being swatted on each and every side. Hello? White Crane. Just, uh, you know, the EDM is too loud. It's funny to have a 1v1 bro? situation. Cold. Trying to do her damnness here. Now a 1v3 situation with the overkill popped. The Emperor's still available. That shock dart will go wide. So it'll just be a rain and a pelting of bullets. But it cannot do a damn thing. And, uh, you know, Red just goes where he pleases, Frank. Goes where he pleases because he shoots his way in, brother. But you gotta talk about the utility, man. The utility is so clean that there's, there's really no chance there. You see, Moose trying to play a close wall angle. Only thing is, that's the angle played, I believe, last round. So it just is read by CSI cleanly. They recognize, hey, we can just pull them off. And they do just that flash to come forward to confirm that the player is indeed there. Confirmation's there. Pull to come down. Easy frag. And they're able to swing that frag all the way into the site. So still, regardless of the differential mechanics right now, still incredible strategies coming out for CSI to show us another execute. You should run. Where multiple players are. Moon flash, flash for days. Flash so long, he has frequent flyer miles on that one. Brett will be good for one. Once again, finding these kills so early on into the round, the lockdown will be used as well for good measure. Nothing on flank this time. There, trash plays, turns the blind eye. Brett will work his way over. Take down the sky there. So now, Bunny Girl, once again, the last one alive, and this flank has just been far too late. Looking for these martial shots, 37 HP on the rain, it will have to. Back away in an unhinged funny girl looking oh, for on. more. Trying to find these like martial this. shots, but they're not like with them. Oh, it's please. Not like this. Oh, no, no. No. She just looked down. And it's just a controlled wave of aggression for CSI. And they're doing so much. They're mind gaming. They're toying with the players at such a great depth, Catnator, that they're letting Bunny Girl just give Can up and look at the ground. Please oh, no. save. Can't hit or do something. <laughs> we, okay, you know what? I'm a big proponent of if you can buy it, buy it, brother. So, run your business. I've got your trail. You see, yet again, we'll be on that stagnant buy. Locking so, still, we, we're yet to get a full buy from this team. Or at least, uh, that's a lie. We got a lot of full buys. We're to get a full buy for the whole team at one time. I guess the better way to say that. Secrets are coming through. Cap early. Information for trash plays. Crossfire is going to be set up for the scaffold player, but they're a little bit. Oh, they go to hell instead. My bad. Elevation hard to read on the mini map. And <laughs> Brett, how on earth are you alive? Okay, hell player is still there. No one's cleared that either. Okay, they will now. It's cool to find that frag. Already has scaffold set up. able to pick up one. Looking for a segment traded by Sandwell. One enemy remaining. going to be out looking for it early. Yet in the meantime, going to find that frag all the way down. Over on white crane in mid. Sandwell is out towards garden. Frag by Cole just like that. Now 9-0. So there's a trigger. There's a trigger discipline play being made by trash plays. Red walks right past. The rest of the team does not. And that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're playing ranked in the chat. That's why I don't care how many teammates walk in an angle before you clear anyway. Because if no one cleared that, Trash Plays comes out with at least two, if not three, as everybody was coming through Cat. But because it still gets checked by uh, Reyna, the frag still happens. Yep. CSI still even with all of this aggression, doing their due diligence. Checking those corners and okay, will be authentic Reyna. Deathless so far. 10 and 0 in this game. That'll be a good thing to note. See if he can not die. See that 10 and 2. Yeah. Clearly, as I'm playing the patient game, and CSI have been rewarded for it using this aggression. DC at least expect it. They're already on top of this site. Sanitizing B. Alert is there. Now the flash being used 
Red his way over, finding one kill. The trade back is there for White Crane, but Red does what he wants. Hulking up here, finding two kills. I'm betting Red up, wants to get in on the action. We'll have to reload Deaths away to keep his deathless streak alive, then finally goes down. But it will be finished off. Red and Yeti complete the tornado of aggression from CSI, and now it's going to be 10 to 0, Catnator. And at what point do you just bring out some sort of cheese strat? Something's got to do. Something's going to happen to fix things. We'll see. I know what the cheese strat is this round. Okay. It's DC buys for last. Okay. So they buy down here so they have money to full buy next. That is the cheese strat. I've used it a million times when it's round 11 and you don't really have money for a full buy, but you'd have money for full buy last round. It's called buying for last. So you save. You save, right? You go, you half buy, you buy what you can, you buy down to about 2K in Valorant, and then you get yourself a full buy next round. Not the strategy we're down. We get a different cheese strategy. It's called forcing up anyway. They're able to find one. Authentic Randy going to tuck towards Cat. First time they've been there, so no surprise that Bunny Girl caught off guard by that frag. And into sight yet again to see a CSI after an early pick. Just kind of walk their way in. Use that Hunter's Fury early for a bit of a distraction, a little bit of info towards Green Box, and then for Generator. Once they had that info, the recognized players weren't there, able to walk inside the frag. And CSI living lavishly right now, a 4v3 situation, daggers, still an option as Moon, slowly but surely will work her way forward with this Ares in hand, trying to find the shots, I have no idea, that was Spaghetti able to find one, able to find two, Moon, not even firing the shots, just lets it happen, and it will be CSI Last picking up round their 11th in the round, and it's just clockwork right now for CSI, not much you can really do in this situation, as Brett, Authentic Reyna, Yeti, nearly everyone on this CSI roster is feeling it right now, hitting their shots and just going to work. If they're going to work, they work at Chuck E. Cheese. This is child's play for CSI right now. <laughs> Still make their way towards Lobby. DC has like given a few strategies. They've been consistently pushing things up, trying to play for retakes instead. The other reason those sneakers are there for early information so they can get rotations quicker, which is it's either use it for retake or use it early. And they decide to use it early instead, which honestly isn't a terrible call for this team because they've been struggling to early info gather. So adjustments are made. They got two players to site this time around. Huge crossfire potential setup. Moon will go down early. It's a nice play from updraft over the lane. Like train to find once a box will get a swing lane. Oh, it doesn't quite account for cold. So trade's still gonna come through. Three players are live for DC though. They're gonna come extra players on the flank this time around. Use it to send those players CT. So once you get another adjustment, are they good for it though? Oh. Turret shot one first. Remaining. Turret actually gonna get a word of the frag. Cold cut. Uh, and shot back. Yeti gonna take that one. Good trade and Cold good for one more. The bottle get a frag and 3k. Set things off as Cold will grab two of their own with the Phantom. Switching 12 sides. to zero. It's match point match here in the point. Good guy, Yeti. Giving the 3k over to Cold. He knows exactly how much damage he does. Gives the turret the final shot. Love that teamwork and the coordination out of CSI. Really just everything going their way, even if it isn't planned. Now 12 to 0. A sea of green for CSI and their fans. Uh, probably elated. Probably rejoicing here. And for uh, for Damon College, you know, it, it you know, there are a couple positives. It will be a quick bot view. No, the it, thing is that they, they keep making adjustments. It's right. not like they're just sitting there trolling. Absolutely. They're making proper adjustments, and we consistently see them switching things up. I mean, the eco was a little troll, but other than that, everything was pretty solid from the team. They just got out fragged, and sometimes that's how it goes. Sometimes your opponent's just better. Honestly, I, I don't want to say this because I don't want to give copium, but I do feel like they're playing with some players that don't necessarily play Valorant but are, ho are helping to fill the roster, which one shout out to those players for filling. Absolutely. In the first place. Uh, also, shout out to the A stack for the B wide open. White Crane will find one. A second, maybe in the future, but. Oh, Reyna gonna save the day. But not to save the HP bar, so that's a very low. Killjoy, but need to find one, and now they're even lower. They're dead out the round. Oh, they got one more timing there. Oh, please! Blind die. Forgot the aim labs. Brett will be good for one. On top one of the enemy two remaining. Three situation. Now we get a 3v1. It's DC. <laughs> Will pick up their first round win. It comes on the pistol round it needed to. And it's it will all be coming not... together, baby. <laughs> it's comeback nation, baby. <laughs> all right, you guys love to buy. This is the time. This is the time we buy, 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 we buy. Hi, everything yeah. you yep. can put in your hands this round. Put it in them, baby. 
You need this round. You need to flow through them. There we go. The rifle's coming out. Buy one more, Moose. Give me one more. Okay, okay. Yeah, Ares player. player. Ares player. I like them all. Double my armor again. I love an Ares oh, okay. player. I love an Ares player. We'll get to see that come out from me. I think they have wall as well. Uh, once again, CSI is gamble stacked A, and we'll learn very quickly there is nobody home. So once again, we are getting the deja vu. I've seen this round before, Kale, well, maybe uh maybe one round ago. Oh man. Stroll through the neighborhood is DC. Lights are on, but nobody's home. Now White Crane, oh, along no. with Sandwell, will guns. be dispelled. Two guns now going the way of CSI. And Brad, look what I found. He's got a vandal now and Moon will go for the land on 5 feet free situation. CSI. Down and Bunny Girl gonna be in for the biggest play of life. Oh, the pistol coming out from Yeti, able to find Bunny Girl in that way. 5v2 situation. One enemy remaining. For DC to deal with. Moon goes down. And it's gonna be one remaining trash place. Falls. So you tuck this one away with extra pillows and blankets. Thrifty. This one a bedtime story. Catnator was over before Defenders it even started. Win. 13 to 1 for CSI, making quick work of their counterpart here in DC. Damon College will go down in a 2-0 defeat. And, uh, you know, uh, prayers up here, Katner. Looks like that's what you're doing here. Uh, they potentially... flawlessly anti-eco'd them, bro. Oh, they flawlessly eco'd them. Rephrase. It was not an anti-eco. It was a definite full eco. Yeah. Uh, I think that last round, you know, kind of speaks to, uh, to the series mm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Damon played good fundamental valorant uh the eco was a, was a little scuffed but i mean sometimes mm. that's just the way of the road they played good fundamental valorant they consistently made changes they got the coordination aspect we talked about on bind they definitely figured it out when we got to a set they were playing two players towards site and when they weren't playing players towards site they're playing for ct stair quick rotation so they could get players out and actually have a chance to retake together just got out frag man just got out frag yeah you know uh it's unfortunate but it will be a good learning experience, you know? Absolutely. Losing equals learning. That's what uh, everyone says, right? So yeah. they'll be able to look back at this game and really figure out what went wrong. Definitely were some bright spots here. You know, Bunny Girl did what she could to try and deal with this onslaught, mm -hmm. uh, this this butchering that really did come from the Dolphins here. And, you know, now uh, it will be the end of this series between yep. CSI and Damon College you know, unfortunate, but it happens sometimes, Cat Air. You just got to live with it. Yeah, you know what is fortunate, though? We got an interview on the way, but unfortunately, a break before we get there. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with you here from this team after an absolutely fantastic victory in a couple minutes. Second, but Red wins it out. 7 IQ does the same. And now it's going to be a 4v1 immediately a monsoon of aggression working towards CSI. Always, never see him lose these. There's one, there's two. Yes, sir. So easy. We'll recognize the CT angled. They'll walk straight into the crosshair. He's never missing that. We'll keep that two off Raider for another round. And, well, one more victim, a 4K for the chamber. Fight clean and would hope to come. Great dart to come through. Moon will walk straight through the backside of two and authentic. Yeah, buddy, that's wall bangable. See you later next round. Against Nico. Look for the daggers inside. Can't get the shank through. Sandwell gonna pop the dash as well. Good fake. Authentic Reina still in a bit of a joust here. White Crane can be able to find one. It's a pincer maneuver on top of Authentic Reina as Sandwell slices his way through you. Side as well. Looking for a third. Get I coming into his own. Okay, not a third. Red will take it away instead. Still a U Haul player. Do they know about it? No, they do not. Well, they do now. And whoo. <laughs> Red will crouch. Let his teammate shoot over his head. He'll find that. Got his 3K. 63 wall goes down very late into the post plant. Great call to come through for CSI. Of any rate to find another. So that wall stalls any information, makes it so much harder. But it does give opportunity for White Crane here, who's going to be heard by the Astro, though. He's stuck towards Ben. Pops off the defuse, not quite able to find it. Of any rate, that will happen. Sandball from downtown with 25 HP left in the chamber, looking all on his lonesome. He will be hunted down, will be swarmed by these hungry, seething CSI defenders. Bread loops around the corner, is able to find the brim. Easy. Information gains from the Astros. Now all three players on site just have to look towards short. Yeti will jump up towards the top of Bach, able to find the first off the tank, and the fourth will come with it. Ask 
No, they, they always say in the tips, Camera. Oh, it's not only this! He doesn't find the shot. He will throw the paint shells to dissuade the approach. And now Damon College, 20 seconds here to save yourself in game number one. White Crane will look to push his way inside. It's a 1v1, and Yeti, Uba. Yeti, flow of wind will take down. Trash plays in a great position. This is the play flick. Oh, man. We'll end up dying to cold. Took a bit of time. Spike now down. Now the drive defense here for DC. Still in a 3v3 situation. It's worked it flawlessly. See if there is a Leer. No Leer for Bunny Girls. This is going to be so difficult to get back on the site. We'll try to dissuade these players from approaching. Ooh. And it's two instant kills. It's a swift one. This cold picks up three. And the third round is four as well. The duels are gone. The sky is gone as well. One Good more. Tuck. And White Good Crane swing. will get folded up like a lawn chair. CSI pick up their fourth round, and it really just looks like the same thing we saw last time around on Bind, now moving over to the second. It's a pizza party for CSI, and everyone's invited. Clearly, five remain alive through that entire wave of aggression. Now, Bind, oh. with a judge in hand, it's almost a formality, and it will be Bread. We'll be able to pick up his third kill. And on the sandbox, the wrong way. Bread will be good for one, good for two. The domino is falling. One the flies are being swatted on each and every side. Hello? White Crane. Uh, this flank has just been far too late. Looking for these partial shots. 37 HP on the rain. It will have to back yeah. away. They're not hitting Bunny Girl looking oh, for more. On. Trying to find these partial shots, but they're not just like with them. Oh, it's please. Not like this. Oh, no, no. 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 Over finding one kill. The trade back is there for White Crane. The bread does what he wants. Hulking up here, finding two kills. I'm sending Rita. Once again on the action. We'll let the reload deaths away. Oh, no, 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 no. He's been dead for three alive. Then finally goes down. But it will be finished off. Red and Yeti. Three situation daggers. Still an option as Lou. Slowly but surely will work their way forward with this Ares in hand. Trying to find the shots. I have no idea. That was Yeti able to find one. Able to find two. Moon. Not even firing the shot. Each of the Sentinels players CC. So once you get another adjustment, are they good for it? Oh. Those turret shots one first. Turret actually going to get awarded the frag. Cold gun. And shot back. Yeti going to take that one. The trade and gold good for one more. The bottle get a frag. It's Moon K. Off it, Cole will grab Killjoy, but need to find one, and now they're even lower, they're dead out the round. There. Oh, please! Blind die, bring up the aim labs, Brett will be good for one. On top one of the enemy remaining. situation, now we get a 3v1. DC will pick up their first round win, it comes on the pistol round it needed to. And it's it will all be coming not. Together, baby. <laughs> it's comeback nation, baby! <laughs> Right. He's got a Vandal now, and Moon will go for the of 5v3 situation. CSI. Down at the front. Bunny Girl is going to be in for the biggest play of life. Oh, the pistol coming out from Yeti. Able to find Bunny Girl now. A 5v2 situation. One enemy remaining. For DC to deal with. Moon goes down. And it's going to be one remaining trash place. Falls. He tucked this one away with extra pillows and blankets. Welcome back, everyone, to the CNC broadcast here between CSI and DC. But now we have our post-game interview. We welcome Yeti to the broadcast here. Thank you so much for joining us here on stream. And, you know, first of all, congratulations on the win. But I have a couple questions. You know, how has the fact that, you know, flexing, it seems like all of you guys can flex and just play whatever you want. We saw, you know, you on the Rays, then on the Sova. How has that helped things and made things easier for you guys as a team? Uh, I think me being able to play Raze and Sova and all the other guys playing uh, who they're most comfortable with, it actually helps a ton because we were actually having trouble picking who, which agents we would have on uh, each map, whatever. And we kind of went into mine not knowing who we were going to play. And uh, we just went based off of what we do in uh, ranked, you know. So it actually worked out for the best. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. I like that. We talk about playing with the rank compositions, but it didn't look like you guys played with rank mentality. I mean, consistently putting a player conditioning wise all the way through A, getting that space early. The player, honestly, a lot of the time was you. Is that something that was getting calmed or just you was running it down? I think at first we started off a little slow, especially on mm -hmm. the first round. I think we did a, a take and uh, I went through showers and I was playing a little slow. I couldn't really create space. But then uh, we actually calmed, like, okay, what if we go a little quicker on A showers and we double up on that and. Uh, it actually worked out really great, to be honest, especially when it was me and Chamber there. It uh, it opened up a lot of room, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, one more question for me, at least. How long have you guys been together as an actual team? How long have you? As an actual team, uh, a month. <laughs> but uh, two oh. of the guys, uh, two of the guys, um, Io and Bread, or I Seven uh, IQ and Bread, uh, they've been on the team way before us. But we have the uh, me and the two Erics, or Authentic Reina and Cold. We're pretty new. Got you, got you. A new roster certainly looking like a season one. I will not lie. Well. To close us out here, is there anything you want to say? Any shout outs you want to give the university, a coach, something like that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, shout out to CSI, uh, Alberto for being the man, Ryan for helping me. And um, uh, Brothers to the End, I know you're watching. Thank you, Moisty. Thank you. And everybody else, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Much fun. Yeah, and thank you for your time. Thank you for the games, man. Absolutely exciting to watch. And good luck in the rest of the season. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, that's it for our interview there. Great talk with Yeti, Cat Nader. And really, you know, the sky's the limit for this team. And it will yeah. be interesting to see, you know, when they do play some uh, tougher competition, how they do end up stacking mm -hmm. up. So for the Dolphins, that'll be at their 2-0 over Damon College. We will have more Valor with them. So don't go anywhere. We have our student cast here at Jefferson State and Hutch Community College going at it right after this. So we're going to go to a really quick break. Back to some more Valorant. Cat Nader, it's been a pleasure as always. K Tab, cool scoots. You guys are the players doing what you do best, pressing buttons as always. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the CENC stream, and we hope you have a great rest of your night. There, everyone. Welcome to Esports U. My name is Sami Nami. Oh, I'm Dinky. <laughs> and uh, we're here to cast some Valorant match tonight. Uh, the teams that are playing are JSCC and HCC. Um, have to take another look to see what those acronyms are. But uh, yeah, these two are some good Val teams, I believe. Uh, anything that you think we'll be seeing tonight? Uh, uh, this is my first time casting Valorant, so I, I'm excited for anything to happen. Um, I'm more so excited to see like what's going to go down in the maps kind of thing, because I'm more so used to seeing Pro League getting played on like Split, Ascent, so like seeing it on Icebox, so I'm, I'm really interested. Yep, and just as you mentioned, our first uh, map is going to be Icebox, so we're going to get right on into it. Uh, Honestly, with Icebox, I think we're going to see a Sage. What do you think? 
Oh yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm expected to see a sage in every game. I'm just so used to seeing sages in my games. So she's she's very strong. You know, you have the opportunity for that wall on B. That, that I don't know if you guys watch TikTok enough, but there's this, this <laughs> nasty wall that you can put down where you can't get up on the ropes. It, it's absolute awful. So you're stuck breaking Ooh. through at least two walls to get through. So sage is definitely a must pick. And as we go right into the Asian selection, no less. So far, I'm not seeing any sage. I'm, I'm strongly actually surprised mistaken. by this. <laughs> wow. Oh, In no. fact, we're going to have Sky Chamber. These picks are quite interesting, actually. And I believe uh, one of the newest agents, Neon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very fast, you know, with as big of a map with Icebox. Like, Neon is very mobile in the sense where you can get from one side to the other very easily you don't have that weird yep. teleport like if you were to pick omen but um i did see a killjoy in there very excited for that for some maybe turret kills yeah i was a little little iffy about the killjoy she, she's really? great at holding down sites but i spot haven't yeah that's just it it's so big you never really know mm -hmm. so I, here we go Right here, both things on either side, and uh, looks like the defense is just set up good. while the attackers are looking to probably rush A site. Mm -hmm. Hard rush, hard push. I'm looking at everyone's lined up. Indeed, they are. Oh, match is going to get underway here right now, and we'll see how they tackle this. It is just pistol rounds. You could either see them going guns blazing or bide their time. And we'll get set up and starts to use. Sadly, so cannot see anything thanks to that. And yeah. first pick, thanks to Riles. Oh, Good old classic. Oh. Good old switch. recon bolt. Yep. See the helm uh, going on in. Doesn't find anyone, sadly. And neither team's really making a push here, despite the pick on the against the defenders. As I say that, they're already on site and trying to make some plays. Seems the attackers are just getting the kills they need and sending out bum. Now, Playing very there's... safe underneath. You know, 4v2, always got to play it safe. Yep. Oh. oh, but not safe enough for Riles. It's one tap right to the head. Honestly, I think the... It's hard. The hardest part about this is timing. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Nice pick, nice pick. Indeed. It's right remaining. there. They need to start defusing this, otherwise this bomb... Oh no, they got... I think that they got plenty of time. They're fine. They're good. Very nicely dead. played. They You're played welcome. extremely safe, bided their time, you know, and kind of rushed yes. them at the end, which was very smart. <laughs> yeah, I would have rushed it. <laughs> Yeah, no, same, uh, honestly, but maybe that just shows how our mindsets work. <laughs> <laughs> bad. This is why I play bad. This is why I can't click heads good. Hey, so it's sometimes, I mean, it's it comes and goes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know? We, can, we all can't be gods at the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Looks like they're trying to make a push towards mid now. Maybe going on to if I'm the the attackers in this case, I definitely would try to take this B site here, since most of the heavy was on A. Mm, it looks like Hildris is holding down the fort. Double kill. One enemy remaining. Well, yeah. Quadruple oh, kill. You were right down. You were down the KJ too. You were down that KJ pick. Showed you up real I, I, fast. I'll admit, huh? I I was, but you know what? It's not this. It's not the agent. It's the skill of the player. <laughs> That really shined here. Mm -hmm. Game Boy getting the first ace of the entire match. Oh, what? I'm happy with this. <laughs> okay. So a little thing I like to see is the Guardian. That the Guardian's is one of my favorite guns to see in the game, so I'm just very excited to see it. We have this full Especially on the on chamber. The Indeed. Uh, I think they're both sides are just trying to save right now. Mm -mm. Um a little questioning the uh, light shield buys, but uh, 
It's a strat. They're, they're, they're fully saving, 100%. They're going for that well, full buy next round, maybe? Yes, they, they are. Um, the strategy with this is that you're trying to... Both sides are trying to match one another, and great pick with Ryles using the Vandal. With concealment. Trying to see how the pack is going to push this. They're very slow, but they're moving fast. Despite it. With that, it's a 3v3, oh, 4v3 situation. 3v4, 4v3. Same thing. Same, same difference. difference. Same difference. Exactly. But the attackers are really in position here just to hold this site. Mm -hmm. Now, with the spike planted, what they need to do is position themselves to be in off angles and have crossfire here. If they can do that, then by all means, they are set for the game. One oh yeah, remaining. definitely. I think they yeah, have this in the bag. Bean, Bean Boy doesn't know what to do. Bean Boy's cornered. Oh. Oh, kill, your favorite, your favorite killjoy is right there. Oh. <laughs> Poor Bean Boy. Poor Bean Boy. Hey, you can't win them all. Nope. So looking at the our loadouts here, looks like we're going to see a full buy. Still keeping the guardian. I'm actually very happy about this, but tactically might be a bit of a misplay. Um, haven't been seen Chamber do a whole lot. In this game so far, but it is early game, so I might just be counting my eggs before they hatch. What are your thoughts, Denki? Uh, I think with Chamber, at least from what I know, uh, I'm waiting for the late game, you know, that alt op thing going on. That, it's the most terrifying noise that you can hear that comes out of a chamber. Um, but with Icebox, I feel like maybe make some plays towards like mid side when, when he does get his alt. Uh, you also have that very long range that you have on B site where like you can just hopefully get some picks there. But um, we're seeing everyone kind of um, at least food delicious play towards mid side. Everyone's kind of split up right now. I know. Yep. Oh, and as we go right in, Neon gets taken out right away by Ryles. And then it's right back to the slow game, but it does fear that Ryles gets spotted out by Bean Boy. Bean Boy's holding down these angles smartly. But, sadly, the spray was not in his favor with that crossfire. Mm -hmm. Now it seems the both teams are making their way towards B site. Yeah, the Viper ult go off. Yeah, the Viper ult's gonna be great in confusing your enemies, as well as just doing a little bit of damage to uh, mark them down a bit. You could mm -hmm. even just whip out your pistol and start right-clicking everyone. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Last right there, standing. she's so close to them. If only she knew that she has to turn <laughs> to the left. Oh! Oh! She might have a chance, but she really needs to play this smartly. One enemy remaining. Ooh, nice the best pick. thing she can do right now is run. <laughs> save, save. Yup. Oh, they both, both don't make it out, in. though. That sky gets taken down as well. Yes. I mean, in in hindsight, that's not the worst thing to have if you're a defender. Uh, if you have to lose one, make sure the, the other team does not get out with their guns either. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's it's not what you want when you're trying to win the map. You're, because as a defender, you want to get as many points as you can before you have to push everything. If you know you're better on one side versus another. Oh, definitely. Finally seeing another play A. Hey, you know what? A sites. I thought they would push this a lot more rather than the mid pushes. Mm -hmm. Because their mid to Bs have not been that great. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, JSCC knows that. And what they're using, they plan to abuse it too. Mm -hmm. Ooh, got a couple of Guardians here, in fact. Both Bean Boy and uh, the Sova. Riding around with them. It's actually uh, I very got, exciting. I to tell see. a lie, it's not A no more. They're, they're rotating over to B. <laughs> it's one of the split decisions. They realize that there's so much utility on A right now that it's Spike not worth to go B. to A. Mm -hmm. Best thing to do is rotate it out. 
Mm -hmm. And, well, if you're HCC right now, you're uh, you're a little scared. You're, uh, you gotta pick your fights. Player standing. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, oh, there you go, that chamber. Maybe you can clutch this. Maybe, but he's aiming down sight, and in the tactical world of Valorant, ADS is not what you want to do. I've been told many, many a times to stop ADSing. It helps if you can get the shot off, otherwise... Uh... Uh, it's slower, I get it, but I don't aim good, but it looks like... Yeah, so the best thing... Alpha, Alpha has two options here. Either try to rush it to get the bomb, take out enemies, or just save. And right now I believe he's going for the save, which mm -hmm. is pretty smart given the... Uh, well, via time or just plain old economy. Mm. Uh, you take a look here as they're buying up their weapons the econ for hcc it's not looking great actually at all uh, a lot of them currently are just below 3k uh, alpha is the exception given that he uh saved the last round mm. otherwise a lot of these players they're gonna have to go with light buys and uh, possibly light armor if buying at all It's a, it's a full way. econ game that you have to play with in here. You see, I'm see. absolutely terrible with econ, so therefore... <laughs> I, I see I have enough money, I'm the type to buy immediately. That's probably why I'm so bad at the game! Hey, you know what? Uh, it's not the worst thing overall, because if you know you can get those picks, it, in the end, it doesn't really matter, because you're getting the picks. Mm, mm. cares about econ as long as you're doing well <laughs> that's a way to look at it now rouse did open up with their alt here and they're just they're trying to search around they're trying to scout it out see who's where again it's that slow game mm -hmm. but with hcc being so split you wonder what's going on inside their heads right now are they trying to Don't wait for I... some the defenders to over peak are they trying to Fake a push? I it don't... looks like the fake push is working. However, Sky goes in to check with his wolves. But uh, the raise on left. JSCC is not deterred. Mm -hmm. Waiting by screen is the best thing that you can do, at least. It's very safe. Unless someone's coming down mid, but it's very safe. It's usually what I do. But starting to see some play. Oh! Ooh, taking out the classic. Right in the face. I believe it was that right click too. This was a one tap and they were down. It's the most demoralizing thing being taken out by a classic this late in the game. <laughs> is it really? And for me at least it is. It's 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 real embarrassing, you know, when I have something like a vandal and I I get taken out by a classic. One and enemy oh. remaining. And Sky here, she is just going on a tangent, taking out everyone left and right. Bean Boy is going to try to stick it. Can Chamber make it? Mm, no. They will be able to eliminate Bean Boy, so he's he still has a good econ going for him at least. Saving that money. Looking to buy a house later, you know? That Chamber's. Possibly. <laughs> now we could possibly see an op. Maybe next round, if Chamber uh, wishes to have it. Mm, mm. Because having those double ops is quite as... Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. No other way to describe it. It is quite terrifying. Because you have five distinct shots from Chamber, and then the <laughs> op in general is just so good to have. It's a one hit, one kill. Mm-hmm. You know, the uh, defending solo tries to see where HCC up. is pushing. Doesn't get much uh, intel from that arrow initially, but it looks like uh, it's over here. The nice guy well, takes a little too much and gets punished for it. Files, on the other hand, scouting out site B, seeing if they can catch anyone out as they rotate. Planted. Isn't finding much I'm anything. Viper. Ooh. In the picks followed by Alpha Tanker. 
I'm starting to think sitting at rafters might not be the best idea. Well, the biggest thing here is positioning. Because if you can position yourself in this way that the enemy doesn't expect it or that you have the visual tactical advantage, that's what you want to have as an attacker. As such, it's showing, it's showing the work right now. Mm -hmm. Score is quite close, in fact, too. With these, it, it seems like each uh, plants and the fuse is back and back. Mm -hmm. Very uh, close. Very like, close. It doesn't seem like it, either side has a uh, distinct strategy. That's uh, they're using over and over like bread and butter. It seems like they are constantly trying to adapt mm -hmm. on uh, what to do, but they are holding the same angles in the same positions each time. You want to play? Let's play. Oh, that's oh, terrifying. And there we go. It's Chamber. He's out there with his alt. Just the, as you said, the presence itself is a menacing thought. Oh yeah, most definitely. Oh, if only if only Chamber knew. Oh, oh, oh he knows. Now he knows. <laughs> nice recon ball. Amazing vision on that. Through the wall. Oh! Didn't Spike expect to have a shot into of the face. Sins with the bang bang. Last player standing. Ooh, poor bean boy. Left alone. Oh. Once again. Yeah, but they're rocking the sheriff out here. Let's see if they can actually uh let's see if they can clutch up. It's it's gonna be a rough one. 4v 4v1. Mm -hmm. But uh we we saw it early in the round, they could do it, so maybe they go for it, but I think their best bet here is to just play it safe. Because mm -hmm. they'd be hard pressed to do much of anything here. Oh yeah, definitely. They're so close to each other. She has no are... idea. <laughs> right underneath. Oh, and there she goes. Oh well. But... Oh, even that. Sky was. Oh, oh, nice pick. Long I did range. Not believe that was gonna happen, honestly. Ooh. Oh, Bean Boy gets caught off guard by Riles, stabbing him in the back, right? Uh, almost literally. Mm hmm. Now here, the attackers have great econ to use with, compared to the defenders, they are they're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. It's, uh, it's not looking great. But uh, in terms of alt econ, the attackers also are do are in a better position than, uh, than the defenders. Mm -hmm. At least tactically. Econ wise. You could argue. Well, the thing is that you have Killjoy's ult and Raze's ult. Killjoy's great for uh, zoning a site because you don't want to get trapped by it. Mm. While Raze, Raze's ult is it's just for damage, let's be honest. Yeah. You're trying to get a kill if you're Raze, right? Oh yeah, definitely. With Sova, you could uh, hit him through all the walls and Viper just also is a zoner. And just as mentioned, Viper goes right in with her ult. Oh, the kill switch caught off guard by Vague. They thought they were safe as soon as they were starting to plant, but they were not. That's the scary part about this Viper Pit. You okay. don't know what you're jumping into. Ooh, hardcore parkour from B Boy, yeah. right over just the a little. <laughs> right over the oh, pit. And B just as you mentioned, he gets a pick on Alpha Tanker. Tries to bait the uh, the fuse. They go in the check, uh, find no one's there. Ray sends in her little bot. Couldn't find a jump kill. Ah, uh, the attackers win again for this round. Mm -hmm. I think they're starting to uh, they're starting to learn their uh, little strat here. Their the way they position themselves and oh, yeah. how the defenders position. Most definitely. Oh my God, they're rich. <laughs> 9k on the on Riles opting for a vandal. Everyone's so much money, so much money pulled on the hacker side. 
Yeah. As defenders, given that they have three rounds left here for themselves, uh, I'm, I'm wondering how that what's going through their mind as they're buying their weapons here, as well as their armor, because they're almost full spending at whatever they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that's the wisest thing to do. Oh, you're, because, you're uh, a type of person to, like, save it until the very last round and full buy, like, guns blazing. The ops, though, Yes is. and no, but really, I'm, I'm the exact same kind of person. But as I've seen from tactical viewpoints, you, you would be better if like, you're going with maybe a stinger, if you have to get armor, light armor. Mm. And uh, because you, instead of trying to win the one round, Try winning the two rounds Deploying and drone. take any uh, guns from your enemies because you know they have good guns. So play smart, play the angles. Mm. Losing that Poor round Bean again. Boy. Four to six. Poor Bean Boy always stuck alone. <laughs> All his they are, are but uh, I believe Bean Boy just sets themselves up on the other side so they always have to rotate alone. They're never really. Pushing with the team, mm -hmm. and what what you've seen prior actually for the defense that's worked for them is when all the team members are there to push together, not separately one by one, because mm -hmm. that's how they get picked off in crossfire. Mm -hmm. And the attackers rotate themselves uh, from time to time in these cross cross firing positions. Bean boy right up on the kill board again, getting the Sova kill switch early on. So that will be less uh, intel that the attackers can receive. Rage comes out with her ult, goes for a shot, and finds, well, nothing. Not really the greatest time to ult, I would say. Nothing's really happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. You have only the one pick as uh, defenders, and it seems the attackers realize there's so much utility, they are deciding to rotate. Oh, but they don't know that Neon's right there. Will they get the picks? No, everyone was there. That Neon saw her life flash before her eyes just in that moment. Unfortunately. She was close enough to catch him by surprise, but again, the attackers pushed all together, mm -hmm. which is something the defenders need to do in order to be successful, I believe. That's the thing though, know, Icebox is just so huge that like, I feel like splitting up, you, you kind of have to. If you're all stuck defending one site, it's, well, if they rotate, it's a little bit... To a degree. Um, the thing is that you try to figure out what's the best path to take to rotate to one another. One enemy and uh, you, the thing you do is you uh, commit to the call. Oh, ugh. Unable to get out. Everyone else. Attackers. The attackers Last move. Round in the so if you again, if you look in the at the Zcon, this is where it's all gonna matter. It's the last round. Um and they're not looking great. The defenders have little to no econ at all. Three ops. To the attackers with three ops. This is what I'm saying. Like you needed to save op. Sure, the Guardian is great here. Personally, I think that. But you really gotta hit your shots. If you can't really hit your shots on the Guardian, you're not gonna get as much value as you could with a Phantom or a Van a Vandal. It's a very risky situation. Mm -hmm. Oh. There it is. That noise that keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> just the reverb. The echo. I, I wake up oh. in a cold sweat just hearing the off noise go off. <laughs> Oh, if only there was a door behind that killjoy, she would be spotted. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh! They may have given themselves away too early. Just a Tried to go for the picks and just could not. Riles, out here with the picks. I think out of all the players, Riles is the one that's, uh... The one to keep an eye on, honestly. And to watch out for, too. Oh yeah, like from what I've seen, Riles has always been lagging behind or like on the other Get side kind way. of thing. Like, but like Riles really is getting those picks that you expect from a jet, from a duelist. 
which is good. Yeah, high mm. mobility. Um, Woo! Just as we're talking about her, just lays into the neon, finishing that round with a triple kill. Oof. We're back on the pistols. Now, maybe for uh, HCC, they're this is what they want. They want to be attackers. That their defense is not the greatest. Uh, we'll, we'll see as it reflects in their gameplay. This round can either really tell how a team's going to play or just be a, an extra round that gets played. I I kind of take the pistol round as an extra round rather than like a foretelling of how someone's going to play. That, that's that's just from my experience and my knowledge, I'd say. Fair enough. I feel like the game can go either way, but pistol rounds is kind of like a free round where you, where you you're it's even, but it's you get the picks. Stuff it like is. that. And right away, Alpha Tanker. Headshot. Ooh. Now is that a specialized gun or is that just the classic? What kind of gun? Oh, is it's it? like a it's like a um so it's his ability. It it functions like a sheriff for chamber, yeah. Oh, you have to buy each, so, each bullet, I think. Yeah. Ah, uh, so it costs the shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How fitting for a man that uses credit cards as teleport. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so many memes on poor Chamber. Have you ever... Um, we were talking before the, the, the stream started, and you were saying you haven't played since Sky One came out, enemy right? remaining. This guy was first introduced when I stopped playing. Uh, I've started playing again, yes. But uh, it was one of those things where uh, uh, it was just a school decision kind of thing. Mm. Anyway, we got this 1v1 situation. Let's see how uh, Sky does against. I'm using the uh, agent's name, the one that controls stars. Alistar? Astra. Ash Alistar Astra. is a League of Legends champion. Bro, I never right. knew that. I never knew that. Really? I'm trying not to say Alistair. <laughs> Alistair is, is, you know, same company. Wrong game. Ooh. Oh, they were able to defuse it. Defuse, but oh, that was what close. What a clutch of a play. Amazing. If only uh, Astra pushed that, they would have stopped him. Just a second earlier. Just a second earlier. Just a second that earlier. That was milliseconds reality. of difference. What a clutch. Deciding to stick with it. Oh, and uh, Alpha Tanker. I know I've been uh, talking about Alpha Tanker a lot, but uh, going with almost a complete full buy with a Guardian and Light Shields. That's not a lot of money left for them for econ wise. So they, the He's biggest confident. thing, they better get their shots. Playing with confidence. I suppose so. I mean, it is showing they're up 9 to 4, but. Attack and defense can differentiate between teams. Some teams are better at attacking than defending. Bean Boy thrown right in with the kills, followed by atrocities. Spike planted. He gets shut down by Saucy Boy. I love these names. I'm sorry, I love these names. <laughs> yeah, but nice guy Wayne. That's 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 quite a unique name. Numbers and all. Right now, it's kind of a standoff right now, but, uh, the Ash Astra? Astra, Astra, yes, yes. Astra. Uh, she, she was playing it well. She was playing, uh, under, trying to keep out, out of line of sight from the, uh, One present defenders. It's working in their favor real well. Defending extremely well. Getting out of yeah, there. Can... Everyone's getting out of there. <laughs> oh, if you're a kill switch, you gotta get those picks! Ooh. Or maybe have just run away. Either way, they get money for the kills. The attack. I think the, uh, HCC. They, I believe they are the uh, they are the attacking type of team rather than defenders. It's it's coming out and showing. Oh yeah, definitely. They're like um, for at least for when um, JSCC was. Oh my gosh, my poor brain is not functioning good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I had a train of thought. Okay. I lost it. It's gone. 
Oh, it's going, it's going, and, and it it's gone. It crashed. It's gone. I had a thought. It was a good thought. It's gone. You were going down you your train of thought and turned into a train wreck. You see the killjoy Killjoy that out. uses. Uh, you really gotta, you gotta respect the killjoy all. Otherwise, you will be punished. Oh, Interesting yeah. play from the Viper. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. That was, uh, I was not expecting Viper to go all in there. See, the thing with um, when Killjoy it, Elk comes down, you have two options. You run out, or you, you make a fight for it. You you try your damned hardest to fight before, sure. it, before it goes down. But the thing about it is that you are... Tactically, you are better to just sit back positionally rather than trying to rush in because you, you're either confident you're going to get the picks or that you know where the Killjoy ult is so you can get rid of it for your teammate before it goes off. Oh, uh, these attackers, they need to uh, they need to stop this defuse where they can. Ugh, looks like they're to. just a little too late to do so. JSCC, they are definitely holding strong. I mean, their econ's showing their strats are showing, their positioning is showing that they're trying to play it smart and play the slow game. Well, H, uh, I believe it's HC, yep, HCC, I'm getting myself mixed up here. Um, <laughs> That's the problem I had, yeah. Fast, they're going with fast buys and uh, fast, fast rushes, big buys the entire time. Which, again, is not the uh, not what you really want to do in this kind of game called Valorant. Mm -hmm. We did see a little bit of a split happening in the beginning, but everyone seems to be converging towards mid A site. A site has seemed to be like 50 50 working out pretty well in JSCC's favor, in my opinion. Agreed. It's. <gasps> It's one of those sets where both sides seem to have an idea of where they want to position and play themselves. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's... Ooh. ooh, it is not looking well for JSCC at or the moment. HCC. Right? Oh, uh, HCC is the attackers. Oh my gosh. See, I keep on getting mixed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it was a, it's a little mind thing. You, you're, you have to work around a bit. My poor brain. Yes, it's. But as it is, the bomb is down on site, same spot, out in the open for the attackers to positionally see any defusers come down. Oh, but Atrocities gets punished for ego peeking that. If you're if you're JSCC, you should be trying to go for these defusers right now. This is. Player standing. Too much Ugh. leeway you're giving to uh, JSC or HCC at the moment. He's and out, HCC though. is just capitalizing on it. Hundred percent. But uh, econ-wise, both teams actually seem to be evening out this time around, which is a bit on the unusual side. However, the attackers uh, HCC. They are very, very much heavy and ready. While JSCC, they're, um, they're, they're, they're again, saving. they're going with full buys. I need well, to the smart Pursue thing to do it. is to save, vision. but, uh, and I might have been wrong here. I might have uh, looked at the numbers incorrectly, but uh, looking at the numbers, doing the math, uh, calculating it out. I'm not an accounting major, but... Uh, <laughs> That doesn't add up to the recipe of success. Not right away, I would say. No, everyone seems to be playing a little slow this round. At least from what I see. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like both sides are really just playing it slow. Bean Boy is, uh, I get the feeling Bean, Bean Boy's a bit paranoid. A little bit. Like every corner a little bit antsy, time. a little bit antsy. Yes, they're, t they're trying to quick fire. Ooh, Ooh nice pick. Yes, kill switch was not expecting the uh, camping vague. Ryo's going around with his shorty, trying to take it real slow. They're on the prowl. 
and not able to find anyone. HTC has honestly been doing a great job of bait and switching the uh, defending team, leaving uh, Vague to be the roamer right now. The type of role that Riles was doing the entire time on their defense. I mean, uh, on their attack. Moving in slowly here. Got great position for HTC to defend this site. We need about to act real fast, left. though. That bomb, is, that bomb is about to go off. Well, not maybe not too fast, but start to pick up the pace a bit would be appropriate. <laughs> now both... Either side has to get out of the range of blast, otherwise they will be caught in it. And that's another point one for HCC. It seems that uh, they have their bread and butter right now. They uh, are making a comeback. That attacking side be doing them real good. Yeah, they are. Wait a minute, what is uh, Astra? Oh, Astra, Astra must be using her ult. Is that right? No. It's the wall. So Astra's all is is the big wall that comes down. The thing with Astra is sure. she's so confusing to play because you have to take a step back, find a safe spot to put down your smokes, to put down your gravity poles. Sure. But part of that comes with performing it in the uh, pre-phase, such as you would with uh, smokes on, um, I'm losing his name, but the captain. And uh, brimstone, Omen's... brimstone, brimstone, yes, brimstone. that's who brimstone. he is. Don't mind me, I just forget names. <laughs> yes, it's okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, HCC actually gets picked off, two of them, in fact. Not the greatest thing you want to see going on early, and uh, but they did leave Spike back towards spawn so that way it was not lost in the enemy zone. Ooh, Rouse is about to make the wrong there. peak. <gasps> oh. Yeah, you're right about that. Both sides were not ready for one another, but Neon was uh, ready enough to get the kill. Now, as HC, what do you think HCC should do here as they're attacking, trying to push with this spike? What What do you think there is their game plan? Um. Well, I believe they don't see the wall yet, left. or the viper wall. Well, that comes down very quickly. I think the fact that they're playing. You know, shift walking, playing it slow, playing it safe. It is a 3v4. I have so I, I definitely think they're playing good. Catching them off standing. guard, hopefully. I'm, mm. I stand very corrected. That is my bad. Just the sofas left. left. Ending for his own. Oh, and it won't be enough. They get, uh, they get picked off right at the end there. Now, if you're JSCC, you just need two more rounds to win this over the first map and honestly i if i was uh hcc or, not, not jsc uh, attacking or defending Def defending <laughs> <laughs> we'll just refer to them on their sides <laughs> if, if i'm the defending team right now i have all this all economy i would start using a little bit and looking to shut them down as they start out with chamber in fact However, positionally, I believe Chamber should be on Site A rather than Site B. Because that, that long sideline is not the greatest thing to uh, use on B site as it is on A site where most of the, uh, the attacking side is pushing. And right now, both t sides do have ops. Well, more ops on the defending than the attacking, regardless. It is an intimidating factor to play against one another. Extremely. They're right next to each other. They're... That it Astra just and that don't Silva. don't know it. Oh, but the Silva gets a little caught out, revealing their position to the attacking side. If I were the attackers, I would have tried to rush that. It seems they just let him go, and they're trying to play it safe here. They have oh, 30 yeah, seconds left. They're using this tactic where they're kind of pushing as a team, like how you're saying. So I think no one really wants to stray too far off, as we're seeing. That's terrifying. Well, she's gone. Oh, see, though. She's gone. 
She got shut down by Alpha Tanker just now. Ten seconds left. So you see Neon with the bomb running completely to the other side. Which is good because honest, the uh, defenders were positioned such a way that uh, they were all over on B site. So backtracking over to A and planting the bomb was a tactically uh, correct move. Oh, eliminated by the ankles. Poor nice guy Wayne's not long for this world. Bean Boy coming back with the off kicks. Ooh. Just to get it, uh, Uno reversed right in their face. Ooh. Ulting from the Neon, but I don't think she's gonna be able to... Yep. Well, Make they... great use of it. 3v1, a hard situation. Indeed it is. The best thing they could have done there, that I believe they could have done, is position themselves closer to the bomb, but not with ops. If they had some sort of SMG around or anything like that, uh... You can with the op, it's just, it's one shot, and then you gotta reload. Mm -hmm. And the reload hat is slowed. It's extremely slow. You want something that's quick and fast when it comes to short range. Op is good for when you're, like, you can down mid, range. or if you have, like... Sure. Yeah. And it's also oh, a heavy buy to have lost it. A costly buy. A costly extremely. loss, I should say. Missing the shot. Teleporting back. Or Alpha. He, he was uh, just trying for it. He's like, doing his best. He, oh, he's doing good. <laughs> Look he at is. him go. The picks. The op picks. We see the Ash is. all coming down. As well as the Killjoy. But he is revealed positionally. I wonder if the uh, attackers will try to push him. Doesn't appear to be. He should. Oh! Oh! They get a bit punished for that. Oh, wait a minute. Was that. Did it show it was half planted? I'm not sure if you saw that. It looks like the spike was already planted, but half of it was up when it dropped to the ground. I going. did not catch that. That's interesting. Ooh. Nice guy that's trying terrifying. to get that's some. A, that's a picks. that's a runaway situation when you when when you have that long range and you peek and you hear that off go off. That's a, that's an immediate get out of there. Don't peek that. Just run. <laughs> that's a that's a respect the angle kind of thing. Because uh, if, if you know your enemy, you know how they play or shoot, the best thing you can do is try to bait it out and either know you're going to hit that shot or, like I said, back off and uh, reposition yourself. Last player standing. Because the best time to get your enemy is when they're reloading. Ooh. Just like nice that. Nice pick. Ah, but you're out here with a guardian versus two guys and an op <laughs> being one of them. Uh, the, the fuse is getting stuck here, and no, the attackers. Go uh, yeah, it's the common trend. The attackers seem to just keep backing off rather than trying to come hold on top of the site. Exactly, that's what I think is punishing them the most: is not holding that site. Um, hopefully, in this next map, be being breeze, we'll see a bit more site holding. Rather than uh, give away to the site. Mm, that's the thing with Breeze. It's just so open that I think, uh, unless you're playing B where you play back site, it becomes a little bit hard to hold like on top, especially when you're by the pyramids. You're going to want to play towards like cave or maybe make a play towards tube and get on bridge. But everything's so open in Breeze that you can't really be on site on site. It's a really big, um, what's it called? Hazard? <laughs> at least in my opinion no that's that's a good insight to it um i don't have as much experience playing on breeze so it's insightful to hear uh from you uh your thoughts and opinions on the matter oh yeah like, thank you it's just breeze is so open that it, it makes it hard to play on site unless you're planting at b of course at b there's a lot of um, places where you can hide a lot of corners that you can because you have that big wall for the back side and then you also have B wall but you do have the opening behind you if you're attacking and See. you do have the tunnel but if you're planting A it becomes really hard to hold like on top of site like you you have to play back on that one well hopefully we'll be able to get right into this uh band selection here pretty soon uh, 
who do you think we'll be seeing a lot? Based on from what you said, I think we'll find another chamber, but I'm curious if we're going to see uh, an agent I have yet to see. KO. Thoughts? I I love KO. I, I, I'm used to playing KO, but the thing is, he does have his knife, but when you're playing such a big map like Breeze, I'm expecting to see another Sova because he has his recon. Um, sure. Card. Sova is almost imperative to have for any, if every map. Albeit Cypher as another one. Cypher? Uh, I just feel like there's so many openings on Breeze that it's hard because Cypher, you only get two tripwires, two smokes. It's nice when you do have his ult, which comes up very quickly. But, um, like, I'm looking for, like, like Ko would be nice. He, he does have his knife. If you line it up really good, you can get it very far. But Sova's recon guard is so powerful when it comes to these really big sites where you can bolt down one site and kind of like see what's happening um i'm just looking for people who make like long range plays so maybe another chamber um maybe a bit of a jet, another jet. i'm always i'm always expecting to see a jet with the mobility you can get picks down mid very easily and, and to get around the map because it's such a big map She's she's fast. Same thing with Neon. She's fast. If you want to rotate to another site, you can make it there extremely quickly. Um, no. Who else? We'll what take <laughs> we'll take some more of that insight after a break. Uh, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll see you very soon. Soup.
Hello, everyone, and we are back for map two of this Valorant match being, and I have the names this time, Greece. Jefferson State Community College and Hutchinson Community College. Told you I'd get you back with those names. <clears throat> <laughs> so yes, we are going to the map known as Breeze. Now, Denki, you have a bit more knowledge about this than I do, so I'm going to be a little... A little relying on you for those uh, uh, map callouts, but uh, we'll take a look as we go into these hero bands here. Now, you were mentioning before you about certain heroes you, you wanted to see. Uh, let's Agents. pick up from where Agents. My bad. A bit too much Overwatch. <laughs> Overwatch. It's showing. Uh, All good. But uh, All good. let's. What other agents would you be expect to see on Breeze? Uh. I have seen a very interesting sage wall. I'm waiting for like the meme on sage wall. That's genuinely what I'm like. I've always or lineups. I know viper lineups on this map extremely well. So maybe another viper. Just cause like the, the lineups for viper on this map are, are a little bit easier to get a grasp of. For yeah. at least like when you're attacking. Um as for the sage wall, I've seen one on the two that I know are on A site. One oh, for some yeah. reason there's one that um ends up oh there's sage oh we Jen. might say both sides sage maybe oh well, your your wishes Viper. might just come true here my wishes might just come true I'm seeing the the neon the ko the ko I have not seen ko yet so this would be great to see some of these uh some of these agents come out the chamber I was expecting and phoenix no nope, brimstone. They're just they're just hovering. They're they're going all around. Smokes yes, I feel are. like are, are, are nice a, on this site. They got forty seconds for their uh, agent locks. Starts with Sova on Jefferson, followed by uh, Jet on Hutch. Now uh, they're both still trying to figure out what they want to play, what they want to pick. Uh, coming down under twenty five. They keep hovering over KO and Sage. I'm I'm figure, trying to figure out what nice guy Wayne's trying to do. And there's your Sage. There's the Sage. Hush. There's the Sage. And oh, they may bring the Killjoy. Ooh, it's down, to, down the to the last five, five seconds. seconds. Uh, I wonder if these are panic picks at this point. Comfort picks. Maybe. Comfort picks, maybe. Comfort picks, maybe. But we're on Breeze. We're not on just any other map. We're on sight lines. Oh, yeah, so. definitely. You saw that pick really briefly. We saw Chamber. Yep. No Chamber. KO. No KO, sadly. No I, was, KO, I was really sadly. looking forward to it. I was. They were hovering it. They were teasing it. Something but, Something uh, about KO just, just hits right for me every time I see a KO. KO, I think, um, agent-wise, not the strongest. Per se, character design wise, mm. <laughs> so good. Something so good, like scratches my brain with Ko. I don't know if it's the way he talks. I don't know if it's just the fact that he. There's no reason why they gave that robot pants, no shirt. <laughs> An odd way of uh, <laughs> going into that. the game. <laughs> I've never seen Ko, so I never knew that was. How he, how it looked. Really? Really. You've never seen KO. I've never seen it. Only the face of KO. I, I need to send you a picture of KO. You'll look at that hunk of Oh bolt. no. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. I'll I'll leave the hunk of bolts to you then. <laughs> now we have we see a good amount of people. Going to B site, but it seems they've forgotten the spike back at the spawn point. Not sure Leaving if that was behind. tactical or not. Leaving it, it behind for the Viper to pick up. You do see the Sage holding down on A site. Battle Sage off on her own. Lone Wolf. Yeah, but they get punished for it, sadly. And that's not really what you want to have when uh, you don't have any Fight secondary time. healer. For example, Sky. Who can use their ability to heal? Ooh, Bean Boy out with the picks, headshots, getting the double kill here, evening up the odds in their favor. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. Kill switch, ambitious right click with the classic, but does not quite hit. Easy 3K. 
Nice oh, but... avoid of the flash, but sadly goes down. Poor Vague gets shut down by the attacking Viper. It's a 1v1 situation. Who's gonna win it? It is Hutch. And a quadra kill to Viper. And they got the additional money by getting the spike planted. Oh, so, they're buying, huh? Oh, they buying, huh? The, that's that's what I've been mentioning. HCC, they seem to really, they really go all in rather than saving. It's uh, it's one of those where maybe it's the right thing to do. I, I definitely think rushing will like. For me, at least, I don't rush like big guns like Guardian. I, I rush like a Spectre if I win the first round. It just it just makes more sense in my head to have that extra advantage. Sure, just even if it's it's light, it still can do a nice, good deal of damage. And we have these long side lights here on A. They have no idea the jet's right there. Playing it smart. Oh. Extremely nice control, fire control, dashing out through the wall, sadly goes down. But they get two picks with that, which is really good One to have. Enemy remaining. It is a 1v2 now. Yes, Alpha Tanker with their uh, trademark Guardian right out there, defending the points. They're playing the long sidelines, which is really good One here. Enemy oh! Ooh. But sadly, they One get now. taken down. Curious what Vague is going to do here. Ah, they were looking for the gun. Smart play. But they need to get oh. the picks here, and they do just that. Wall banged right to the head. That Sage is going to see. <laughs> that Sage is getting sent to the <laughs> Shadow Realm, Jimbo. It's a horror game. It's a horror game. <laughs> Indeed. Hey, that was quite the clutch play on Viper. Losing the guns that they did buy, though, that, that's the one thing. They did lose their guns. Yes, and Alpha, again with the Guardian buy. Again, I love it, but I worry for the economy. 150 in the bank. Yeah. Well, then <laughs> there's, there's Riles, if you see, vandaling it. No money in the bank. Light no shields. money in the bank. And on oh, the flip myself. side... The uh, Jefferson, they are, they they got econ right now, and Alpha. most of them have full bot. Alpha so, did end up selling his guardian though. Is that so? Probably yes. just in order to use his ability here with the sheriff like gun. I don't think I ever cut what the ability's name was. That's a case. good statement. I wouldn't be able to tell you either. He he, he golden gun go pew pew. <laughs> Golden Gun go pew pew. Golden Eye 007. <laughs> the wall coming up from the Sage. We do see a play towards mid. The nice pick from Bean Boy coming out with the knives. Nice little sniping from long distance range. Vague trying to corner peek anybody they can, but afraid to move in too much too fast. Big play coming up from uh, Jet, just enough to get nice guy Wayne, but gets shut down instantly. Whipping out the knives once more. They're looking to see if they can find anyone to pick off. Saucy boy waiting for that wall to come down. Yes, left. they are. They're uh, they're trying to play their corners right now. They they show Bad they're not too down. confident right away. They're trying to play it smart, and. Uh, Kill switch gets taken out from standing out in the open, sadly. Probably just hit with too many bullets, which slows you down. Great deal. Ooh. It's it hard we... being the last person there in a 4v1. It's a terrifying feeling. It is, definitely. In those situations, you usually want to try to get out with what you can. Oh, yeah, Be definitely. it as it may. Because, uh... You know, if we look at this econ here... Nice guy Wayne's has to go with the light shield buys. However, on the side of uh, Hutch, they they're going with full armor as big as buys as they can to try to match the, the defending team. You want it's, to play? Uh, Let's play. This is a rough game right now for either side. They the defenders are playing it very well economy wise and tactically, and as attackers, you really need to work on. 
trying to either match them or outplay them. Out of curiosity, what does that switch do that's right beside uh, Atrocities? Oh, it opens the door for A. Does it now? But it, and... it's loud. It is loud. You open that door, everyone knows you're opening that door. Here, ah, that. and it's right there. It's a very oh, close door. Out. I did not know about that. Oh, yeah. It, it opens up, you have the high ground, but the thing is, it that boy is loud. If you open that door, oh, everyone knows you're at that door. Everyone in their See grandma. The pit. <laughs> Yes. The good old... Ooh. That was nice quite pick. the shot. Yes. We heard that chamber ult go off in the beginning of the match. Didn't see it come down until you heard that. That's the bit too. Oh, and Riles caught off guard by Tuck Dog, who, which I don't think we had mentioned earlier, was a sub in for uh, uh, Jefferson. One enemy remaining. Ooh, nice Alpha. flick of the wrist. That flick of the wrist. Alpha going to town with that pop of an ultimate. Huh. Nice spray. <laughs> Just going to show he's uh he's rooting tooting his sharp shooting. Uh it, both sides are quite even right now. Uh you see the consecutive wins for the defense there, but uh he got followed up with just another win on the attacker side. Albeit, most of the picks were parried by Alpha there. So, we may see a little change. In fact, we're seeing an up on the defending side. Uh, I didn't quite see who had it. Bean Boy. Bean Boy. And Bean, Bean Boy, Boy is... Um, I'm trying to remember who Bean Boy is here, but I believe it is the Jet. Uh, Jet. You're right. The jet positioned in a good spot for A. I don't think uh, I don't think that the, the defending sage is ready for this onslaught that's coming their way. Oh, absolutely I'm not. Trail. In fact, they seem the ooh, oh, blind, blind and the flash. Everything's coming in, but they are not pushing it. Oh, this poor this nice guy's just getting wailed on. It's so many down. different things. But the servant has a great distract for because it's drawn all most of the attacker's attention to nice guy Wayne while the rest of his teammates were back sight shooting at the attackers. Armbot goes off signifying to uh Killjoy that there's someone nearby. Wherever they placed it, go, their alarm bot. Attackers now rush to B site. Planting the spike, and the spike defenders, planted. Killjoy and Jet, have to have to be smart with their plays here. They have time to be few, so there's no need to rush. But you need to be able to play your angles smartly, here, especially against this chamber. Standing. And Kill Switch gets the headshot on Bean Boy. It's a 1v3 situation, and... It looks like the attackers walk away with this little round victory. The op in the sage's hands now. See, and guess who's gonna have that op? <laughs> the one, one with the, the op like ult. <laughs> of course. Pro proved aim proved to aim extremely well, you know. Flick of the wrists, as we His saw. His aim be in. true. His aim do be true though. <laughs> let your archers let your archer shot be false. Uh, We're having a good time here. I hope so. <laughs> We're looking at a B site push once again. Maybe something up mid, but I think they're just gonna be flanking and taking their time as they push in the B. It seems to be working for them a lot better than A pushes. Uh, yeah, I think definitely. they only do the A push just to catch people off guard. He's looking for the angle. Does he see him? Yes, he Ooh. gets him with the wall bang right through. And Riles does, in fact, get his kill as well. They seem to have cleared sight, but they don't know that quite yet. As I say that, I was wrong. But now the sight is cleared, in fact. It is now a 2v4 situation. Not the greatest of Sage's walls, but I don't believe that was the Sage wall that I should be looking at. And now we're down to Bean Boy. It's a 1v4. It gets wall banged by Foodalicious. If I said that right. 
another person we did not see from last map. Both the delicious sides. last map, I think, was the Viper, I believe. Well, I don't believe we saw Foodalicious last map at all. I think I mentioned... I'm not sure. I don't want to say anything. My memory is shot. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've all had a long that. day. It's it, It's been one of those Thursdays. Friday's right around the corner, and you know what? We're just happy to get to it. Looking down the way with the op. Tries to go for a shot Ooh. that Bean Boy did, but not nice quite. Nice evade. It is now everyone ego peeking. Indeed, they are an alpha. Actually gets the pick with it. Now, right now, you got, uh, I keep calling it the scout. It is not the scout. Versus, uh, an op. Bean Boy gets the kill. Headshot style on Saucy Boy. <laughs> you have all these angles being peaked. Another headshot. Bean Boy's just going to town. He doesn't need an op. He just needs the click heads. It's a point and click adventure for him at this point. Might as well be playing an RPG. <laughs> oh my gosh! You just look back and forth. Oh, Another amazing headshot! headshot. Amazing hit. <laughs> Are we about to see an ace on headshots only? One enemy remaining. Oh, oh! Spike down. Are we about to see it? No. No. Uh, it's the curse of the casters. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bean Boy. We cursed why'd you. <laughs> why'd you have to call it out? Why'd you have they, to call it out? I, it felt so cool that he did it in the first map. I was hoping to see it again. Now, Sage, Sage is in a really tough spot here. I believe they have just a regular uh, um, rifle of a gun. No, they have a op. They had, they had the op, yeah. If they get pushed on left. both Looking sides, for the flank. yes, and Killjoy, oh. Killjoy could either go roaming or just say, "Oh no, that that Killjoy is going for the flank." So yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, looks like uh, they backs, were thinking backs twice away, being runs off. out of there, knows that that Sage has an off. She's like, "Nah, I'm out. Get me out on the round." Indeed. Now, that save with the off was real good because Alpha Tanker now has an off again. And, uh... Bean Boy spending all the money in savings. Poor life savings on that off. But I think he gave away his marshal to Tuck Dog. Ready. Let's see if we can find the light of sight. And Bean Boy shuts down Alpha. That's one op out of the equation. Whether they attack inside, picks it back up. Uh, hey, yo, not B likely at the moment. Three. B-Boy's at the right angles at the right time, knowing exactly where to go. You it saw says, that 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 switch in vision from from oh my gosh. Playing their angles and check their their timing just mm, on point. Oh, yeah, from main into tunnel. Yes. Well, do you try to take the spike here? Honestly, I think you try to play this slow. Don't play the rush. Otherwise, you will get eliminated by nice guy Wayne. Him and his guardian. They're looking to protect. I mean, this... What a comeback for the... Compared to the three points from the attackers. Oh nice my gosh. guy Wayne seems to be celebrating a little. Uh, shaking around. Having a good time. <laughs> yeah. It is interesting. Boy, on the off. Oh my gosh. 16 and 6. Absolutely terrifying. That is quite a stat for this for this eighth round, ninth round uh play. Although they they do ha they have been getting most of the KDs. Uh, it's not just them. It it's is a team based game. That's one of these biggest things. It's not like an arcade shooter like it is with COD, where you can do anything and everyone's all the same. Each agent being so unique, you got to play your strengths and your abilities to your advantage in order to win. Oh yeah, definitely. Most important thing on this map, at least like abilities-wise, is, is that nice viper wall going down mid. You have another viper wall coming down to protect that, um, that plant for B site. 
They seem to be trying to rush this, clearing out the back sight's angles before they just take, place it down on the mid. Oh, right predicted now, and please. shot right in the head, in fact. Welcome to my world. Interesting, interesting alt, I would say. Um, a bit ambitious, in fact. Although it is a 4v2 situation. Right next to the Viper Pit. That's very risky because that's just thrown right there. The uh, attackers could just go out and eliminate it. You try to force some pushes, but Ooh. it just was not enough. And uh, the, the Thunders, nice guy in Wade, specifically, is going to get that defuse off. Team Ace. The first Team Ace I've actually seen in any match I've casted so far. Really? Really, in fact. Um, well, it's mine, too. It's my first time casting Valor. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you're getting all the things. You're getting to see the ace. You're getting to see the team ace. You're getting, getting to see the see ego peak off. <laughs> the, ret the returns. I mean, this this is a game right here. They are neck and neck constantly. And they're, oh, yeah. But they're also constantly buying out all the time, which is very risky. Because you need to get the picks if you're going to buy so big. Sage wall we see down by caves. Doesn't mean anything though, they're just going to shoot it down. Yeah, I uh, see, the way that orb's positioned, I would question why you- Oh! Well there I've you go, it's a sideline. Oh! Uh, the jet was not ready for that onslaught. They were looking, and they peeked. They ran away, but they still get a pick. Ooh, nice guy coming out. Uh, Unable to get that pick on the sky. Yeah, he kind of just started recoiling and using up what he had in the clip. Oh, nice surprise! Flag. From behind. Let's play. One delicious. Nice sneaky flank from Food Delicious. Food Delicious, yes. Atrocities here. Does not know. Whoa, hello, wolf. Yeah, there's someone <laughs> right behind him. Oh, they're not. Oh, alive. yeah. Oh, no. It's right there. She's it right is, there. But Fuda has the better gun, yet Atrocities has more health. They're backing off. They're rotating. They're going around. It's whoever <laughs> has the better shot here. Fuda is just getting hunted just down. Circles. They're trying to get him. Ooh. And Atrocity nice gets their. Him. The atrocity gets their pick they were hunting for so much. Playing ring around the rosy. Indeed they were. Oh, that was one of those uh, those blood stress moments. I'm making up words here, but uh, high blood pressure moments is what I was. High bl blood say. stress. Blood stress moments, indeed. <laughs> blood stress moments. That's a first. That's the first time I've heard that. Yeah. Um. I'm working it as I go along. <laughs> Now, all, all of economy-wise, the defenders are doing quite well. Only The attackers only have two, and we instantly see a Viper Pit set up. It, it's interesting throwing that right in the choke, because you don't really... It's a great... Them. Force yeah, them it's, a. it's a great smoke screen, and you can stay in that pit Slide to constantly a. Uh, have a Venom wall up. That's... Yeah, definitely. Now, now you see everyone's getting getting forced, uh, forced out of B into A. Yep. And sadly, it looks like someone That's did die bad. to one of Viper's poisons. Be it the uh, jet to the attacking Viper's poison. Oh, so was not ready to be sniped there. Both jets seem to just be playing. So tactically unique, I'll say. Because they, they push hard angles with these sniper rifles. Ooh, Atrocity's coming in. Not fast enough. Small little dash into the corner, throwing out a smoke. Just secure, coming out with the shorty. Oh, they get him right him in the gut! Right in the ankles! Nope, it's going to be the attacker side winning with Chamber coming from downtown with his marshal to the body shot bandits. The 
Oh, this is this is a very even matchup. Extremely here. even. I definitely yeah. think like skill wise, everything wise, like these uh, HCC and JSCC are really even, making for really good games. Most definitely. But uh, right now, HCC currently, if you were to see the game right now, you, c I would predict that HCC wins this map. I would say that just because it's a 6v5 here. And right now they are two alts to three alts, the attackers to defenders. But they position themselves in such a way and play such a way that if they shut down the right people on the defense, they usually have the points to win. Ooh, see the Viper pit coming in. Bean this, Boy with the knives. This is very good because that Viper pit is deadly to go into through two Viper abilities. Hit in the wall. Placing swarm grenade. Swarm grenade out. Get out of my way. Out. Yeah, and with they just took sight there so easily. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That viper pit alone is just cool. Oh, the flank did not work out in their favor. Absolutely not. Yeah, the jet knives. Yep, the oh, they've been <laughs> even spotted. Enemy spotted right there and. Oh, poor Jefferson. They they were just getting swamped there at the end. Would have been a Hail Mary to uh, get all those picks there at the end to win the round. We're back onto the pistol round. Side swapped. HCC is now attacking and JSCC is defending. Now, based on what, uh, based on what I'm seeing here... Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, um... I believe it is HCC. Yep, it is. I am looking at things backwards, and uh, everything's the same. <laughs> Colors have swapped. Anyways. <laughs> this is uh, where we start to get confused. Yeah, this, this is, is where, where we, we start... refer to them as attacking and defending. Because we're yep, like, this, oh, this no. is the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think their defense is going to be super strong against... Uh, Ooh, Sage Jefferson's. staying on top of the wall to the left over there. Oh, uh, but their oh. spot is they had to give up that tactically position. High ground. The high the ground. Tactical high ground, yes. In most games, if you have the ability to get on high ground, that is where you want to be. Oh, they saw him once, saw him twice, tries to get the Ooh. shots. Cannot get him. Left at basically no health. Oh. Or. It doesn't seem like they're hitting them at all, in fact. It didn't show any uh, hit markers or anything. I believe there's hit markers in this game. No, there, you, um, this guy was hit. Healing it up, though. Ah, I see now. <laughs> you are right. They were very close to death. <laughs> well, that's an interesting little gun. It's, uh, it's all cartoony. It's like, it's like the ghost. So, so No, not the side. other one. The uh, classic that went blam, 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 blam. Yes, I, I did just make gun sound effect noises to <laughs> describe a visual. Uh, now oh, trying to get heads. the picks. Wow, Bean Boy is not to be underestimated. Oh. Dashing into the wall with that blind. Not sure where. Not sure where Bean Boy's going. Team Ace. Yep, and the defuse was successful. Or Team Ace, in fact, too. <sighs> HCC, oh, they are, it was like I said, they are in a position that it shows they are confident with uh, with their buys and why they do what they do. Again, the Guardian is coming out. He, he's debating it. He's trying to see, do I want the Guardian? Do I want the Marshal? It seems he's going with a heavy armor and Marshal. I'm looking specifically at Alpha Tanker. He, he's got my eye on the prize. Four marshals on the board. Everyone's playing towards that 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 snipe long range game with such a big map like Breeze. Like it's 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 doable. It's possible. Oh yeah, and uh, coming from someone like myself that likes to play the closer corners, yeah, this map's not ideal for me. <laughs> yes, now you know why I was telling you how much I hate this map. I'm also someone who buys a specter, runs in. I'm a run and gunner. I get I get so much flack for moving and shooting. And sometimes, you know, it does work. It really sometimes does. it does work. Sometimes <laughs> you sometimes do clutch up, you know? 
But hey, uh, we're we're just the we're just the casual players. Don't mind us. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, case. not getting very far in ranked. Uh, the wall is yeah. coming down from the viper to get to be able to get into backside. They have all stacked. Spray and pray from Saucy Boy he finds That's two great. picks. Followed with a third coming through the choke. One enemy remaining. Ooh. Nice quick pick. Eggs trying to get something going. Finally gets to pick on Saucy Boy. Thirty seconds. But, uh, we're in a four v one situation, and Egg is very hurt. Oh, from How above. This world. <laughs> they just got Batmaned. That's terrifying. You just hear the whoop, you just, and you just think to yourself. You're, you're checking your corners. You're making sure that you're playing okay. You're the last person on the team. You're like, dang, maybe they'll come from this side. And all you hear is the jet go off. Yeah, it's like hearing Spider-Man come, <laughs> come from behind. Whoop, whoop. And uh, you think to yourself, hmm, how long until I get strung up? Or in this case, how long until I get shot in the head? It's that typical supervillain moment where you realize he's not to the left, he's not to the right. He's, he's above, above me! <laughs> and it gets him every time. Oh yeah, another sage wall running off that high point ground. They're once again shooting it down. It seems to be their uh, little bread and butter to try to wall this off. But Alpha tanking with the headshot to Bean Boy. Even Atrocity gets shut down by Riles with another headshot from the Marshal. They're looking at Vague trading up though against them with the uh, Saucy Boy going down. Spike Blue down delicious eight. going on the flank and taking out Nice Guy Wayne, who did in fact have the spike. Now she's trying to make sure uh, the spike does not get picked up again. Staying nearby it. Playing the long game right now. Got a little shootout in mid there, as you see on the map. And Tuck Dog taking out Food Delicious. With the shorty at 11 health. From nice headshot. a distance, the headshot kill. Yeah, but as as a defender, you got your angles left. right now. And as an attacker, you're both a little at scared. 11 health. Still, they're both at 11 health. Oh, oh yeah, my. they're both at 11 health. They're low. Yes. That chamber is still there. That chamber's sitting there camping. Waiting. That chamber is holding his angle. Ooh, Ooh, successful headshot against Riles. Remember, it was the 11. Ooh. But it gets shut down with the little handgun. Double eye. Go, double seven golden double eye. Seven. <laughs> the, the double eye. The double eye. The double eye. Seven. The double eight. Oh no. The yes, double the, gold. The, the double A batteries. Watch oh, out. No. <laughs> oh boy. Oh god. We're just having a good time. We're, we're having we're having a great time. We're having a great time. That's but that's also the fun of watching these matches because they can either be so close or. Just a complete shutout, because that's what we're seeing right now, is mm -hmm. really a shutout. Oh, yeah. Touch is not letting Jefferson breathe. As soon as that wall breaks, oh! he's in for a treat! What a tactical play. They knew they were trying to break the wall. It was just a prediction of whether or not they were right behind the wall. And the reaction was just within three milliseconds. Their Alpha angles tanker again. Waiting there. No, I do like the little skin they have. It's it's the old World War II style off. I could probably tell you what type of gun that is specifically, but hey, I'd be nerding out a little too much for that. I don't know my guns. I know I know. Saucy 2D boy guns. <laughs> gets the kills and is defusing. Caught him from behind. Ooh, that's another win for JSCC. Yes. They only need two more rounds to win the entire series here. And uh, as Jeff, as Jefferson, you're feeling this time crunch. Well, not time crunch. More just the presence of these numbers building on you. If you were to try to win this, I'd say forget A. A is not the way to go. E is definitely the way to go because you have a lot better time getting closer to the site entrances. It is only the one main entrance unless you're trying to go through mid, which is very risky. 
But it's better than A side where they keep using the sidelines against you. Just like that. Oh, yeah. Vague went for and got the kill. Alpha almost had the headshot, but was a little too early with the shots. Big boy hiding around this wall, waiting for someone to pop up. Waiting there oh, looking. Oh, that's oh. terrifying. Oh, that's scary. Oh, he's out waiting. the op shot from Chamber. Chamber realizes he cannot take the angle again. He knows. It looks like he he knows that they're gonna stay there <laughs> looking for him. Saucy boy gets the pick on the nice guy Wayne, who uh, I'm not entirely sure where they were standing out there, but uh, seems Saucy boy knows what they're doing here. Going in with the wolf, trying to scout around, see who's where to give the intel to the team. Ooh, Jet nice tries... pick through the through the smoke. Tries to go for the push, tries to get at some sort of method going, just gets shut down left. instantly. They have mid control, the attackers do. They really got to utilize this. They have to get some picks or make a decision on where to go here. Saucy boy. Ooh. Little, little cut by surprise there by Vague. But Food Delicious also gets a pick out on the Killjoy, I believe it was. Ten seconds left. Alpha Ooh. unluckily gets picked up, wall banged by Vague. Is there enough time to plant? Is there enough time to plant? That is just to the millisecond. Barely. That was within tenths of a second. Sage now walking through tunnels, trying to pick out anyone who's peeking. Yes. Well, as you have time, as Sage, you're full health, and in fact, you might be right there with your ult too. Can't see it quite yet. No. Uh, no, not at all. Oh. Ooh, didn't check your corners hard enough. Unfortunately. Thought that it was clear. I pushed up a bit too far and got picked off. It's terrifying being the last person on your team trying to clutch it. Just the pressure is on. Is. Everyone's watching you. <laughs> Everyone's anyway, um. We got ultimates on both sides. We don't talk about that. Um, we got the Silva and the Viper alts, as well as knives. Both Vipers have their alts. So yes. you can either push someone off the site or secure your site for a plant. Now, Viper alt, this would be the one site that would be good to go towards A with. However, if you wanted to try to get through that choke on B, that is another option. Although I don't believe it it's used quite for that. It would be better used for on-site presence. Mm. Saucy Boy's trying to go... Trying to do... I would say pull a little cheeky maneuver here. See if... Uh, a little, little cheeky can... flank all the way through tube. Oh, yes. See so the this turret. Is the tube. Turret spots him. He's running. He's like, they know I'm here. Get the turret. Yeah. Enemy spotted. And... Uh... And nothing's happening yet again. Yeah. Talk, Everyone's talk kind lagging of... behind, waiting for the flank. They know that they're there. They know the sky is there. Jet still seems to be in spawn with the spike, not moving on the attacking side. A little curious on what little is going on there. BC, perhaps, I'm thinking. I'm wondering about that, but uh, we... there doesn't seem to be anything happening quite yet. Yeah, I definitely think. That there was a DC cap sitting in spawn. Oh, yeah. nice <laughs> click heads. <laughs> Unfortunate. And it was Bean Boy who DC. Probably. Or had some sort of trouble. Now all the plays are happening now on a site. Alpha gets the picks, even taking down the spike towards a site. They got about 10 seconds left. They either gotta get the picks or get the spike down. Attackers don't have the time to do this. Ooh. Held down the site really well. Night DC though, sadly, or they're still in. They're still here. It's, into the game. It just seems they're not moving. Hmm. Hopefully that gets fixed. In any case, we are looking at our economy here. Here's that. Uh, if you're HCC, you're sitting. You're sitting pretty all right. You you can. Uh, afford to have some losses. However, you could also just shut it out right here. On the side of Jefferson, however, you need to clutch this. You you got you got to bring it back. 
Yeah, they didn't even use any of their alts. Um, I, I'm not seeing much ability usage as well from them, which I think they really should try to use their Sova until a lot more than what they actually are. Sova just seems to be trying to play for uh, angles to shoot from rather than trying to gain intel for his team. Oh, do just like that. I'm, it's just like I said. <laughs> When the Utel, intel of this agent is not being utilized as it's needed, at least oh, from yeah. what we're seeing here. The recon bolt, I feel like, is so strong on a map like this that, like, you, you, I feel like you need to kind of know your lineups as so good to be able to get at least a general idea of what's happening. Ooh. Nice little nade goes in, but is not able to take, not even able to damage Miles. Yikes. And Miles takes out the Ooh. Killjoy atrocities. It's now a 2v5 situation. Ooh, and that will right. be game. It will indeed. Hutch coming out with the second victory and winning this series. It's soup. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's... I, it's I, unfortunate I, on the DC though. I'm seeing the very last, their top fragger um, stuck in base. Hmm. I know okay, it's usually a DC, but the thing is, I, I'm not too, like, I don't play too many custom games. I don't know if the, the player gets stuck behind in a custom game. Normally they, they spawn you out so you have a little extra gold or gold. Yeah, well, in this case, they would get an extra orb in the, mm -hmm. the defending spawn. But uh, as mm -hmm. mentioned, we do not know if that was a DC. We don't have any information directly, but based on what mm -hmm. we could infer from our own playing experience, that's what seems to happen. Mm -mm. But uh, we're going to cut to break for now. We'll uh, be looking to hopefully interview a player here right afterwards. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you very soon. They need to uh, they need to stop this defuse where they can. Ooh, it looks like to. A... Ooh, looks like nice that. Pick. Yeah, but they're, you're out here for guardian versus two guys and an op <laughs> in one of them. Uh, the defuse is getting stuck here and the attackers. Uh, secondary healer, for example, Sky. Use their ability to heal. Ooh, Green Boy out with a hit. Headshots. Getting the double kill here, evening up the odds in their favor. Oh, okay. Gets shut down by the attacking Viper. It's a 1v1 situation. Who's going to win it? It is Hutch. I mean, the point. They're playing the long sidelines, which is really good here. Oh! Sadly, they get taken now. down. Curious what Vague is going to do here. Ah, they were looking for the gun. Smart play.
Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Sadly, we were not able to get an interviewee. Uh, just we're not able to reach out and contact them. So, Mary, we are here to send you all off. Uh, do you have any final words for them, Denki? Anything you want to share? Happy weekend. <laughs> Don't play too much ranked or your mental will tank. Yeah. Well, that's if you, if you don't have the mental fortitude then yes definitely uh just a little shout out to produce at uh, production has let us know we we also have our own socials here if you guys do want to check us out we have our twitches our twitters uh, i myself stream mostly overwatch uh, so you'll see me around on twitch uh thank you i believe you can I... tell with them yourself if you have anything. Uh, I, I stream, not often. Uh, I'm very inconsistent with my streaming. My, uh, my handle on Twitch is Rhythmink. Uh, my handles on everything is different. My handle on Twitter is Barcode Swinger, but on IG it is Silver Flight. You're never going to get that. I need to stay more consistent with my name. Oh, God. <laughs> In any case, uh, you'll find my name quite easily. But uh, yeah, we're just giving you guys a little chit chat. We're all just saying thanks, yours, damage dealers. Thanks again hey. for coming by to ESU. We'll see you all next time. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for our observers, producers, everyone in the production team. Bless. Thank you, Sami, for casting with me and carrying the cast. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, Danky. Thank you, everyone. Bye. We'll see you later.